catch us and uh, yeah yeah sir yeah sir yeah, sir, yeah. yeah. and then uh, unisect everything no sir we have just make it uh, live on youtube and facebook now we are proceeding sir okay 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 good evening to all thank you for being here with us this evening it's a great pleasure for us us to have this event today as a moderator of this event i would like to give a brief outline of today's schedule first we will start with an inaugural session uh, then we have two eminent speakers who will be presenting on doha on various aspects uh, followed by panel discussion and question and answer first i request our head of department professor bikika lalu to deliver welcome address ma'am bikki Uh, good afternoon. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope I'm audible. Yeah. Yes, madam. 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 Yes. Uh, uh, I would uh, uh, like to uh, congratulate uh, my colleague, Dr. S. Ravi Kumar, on this initiative, on the webinar on international uh, webinar on Koha Integrated Library Management System. It's an honor for the uh, department. um i would like to acknowledge and uh, welcome uh, the patron of uh, this uh, webinar our honorable uh, vice chancellor professor sk srivastava i also uh, acknowledge and welcome our dean dean of our school professor b panda and uh, we are also privileged very privileged to have experts on the field uh from various parts of the world i would like to welcome jessica zairo from usa from the usa welcome jessica uh alex buckley from new zealand welcome alex and uh, professor mukhopadhyay from uh, uh, kalyani west bengal welcome sir our very own deputy librarian and in charge of uh, the nehru central library dr firstborn roy sumer welcome uh, dr sumer and uh, dr sunita barve uh, from csir um, pune welcome uh, dr barve and dr vimal kumar uh, vanthapali uh, from uh, kerala i welcome all the uh, we are very honored to have these uh, experts and i i believe we will have a very good uh, panel discussion and i would also like to welcome the huge number of participants thank you for uh, registering for this uh, webinar i wish uh, dr ravi and uh, um, hira khazarika blispa the very best and as well as for, uh, i wish the part- uh, the experts and the participants the very best thank you thank you thank you ma'am for your nice work <laughs> now i request our honorable vice chancellor to deliver the address as a patron to our august audience thank you sir <coughs> well uh <coughs> namaskar uh, from uh, <coughs> excuse me from professor sk srivastava the vice chancellor north eastern hill university uh it's good afternoon in india and maybe good evening you know at the other uh, uh, parts of the globe uh, at the very outset uh, i am indeed very happy uh, to be here joining this uh, uh, international webinar uh, well uh, my greetings to you all uh, my distinguished uh, uh, panel uh, <coughs> as i just see on the screen uh, uh, you know our colleagues are there our my respected esteemed dean is there professor uh, b panda and uh, we have of course uh, the very active uh, the uh, you know the webinar coordinator dr s ravi kumar also of course we have madam uh, professor b kika uh, uh, lalu the professor and head of department of library information sciences we also have our two very distinguished uh, uh, guests from abroad uh, jiska ma'am hello namaskar this guy ma'am okay and then we have uh, our mr alex buckley from new zealand hello and of course uh, we have other uh, 
my uh, colleagues, you know, the very active uh, deputy librarian, Dr. Sumer. Uh, we have uh, uh, from very important, you know, reputed CSIR National Chemical Laboratory, uh, Dr. Sunita Ji, Namaskar. And, uh, you know, my student is working there at NCL Pune, uh, Dr. Neeraj Maitram. Yeah, he's there, uh, you know, in that organization, very much there. And we have also uh, uh, Professor Parth Sarthi Ji. I, th I think he will be joined. Yeah, he has joined. And uh, Dr. Vimal Kumar Ji. So, uh, and of course, all the participants, uh, I extend my hearty greetings uh, to you all and uh, a special welcome uh, from uh, uh, the Scotland of the East, uh, like the beautiful state of Meghalaya, you know, is called, especially this uh, information, piece of information uh, for my distinguished uh, uh, guests from abroad, uh, Jessica and Alex. You know. So, uh, well, uh, I'm here, in fact, to learn. I will be definitely online with you all and uh, learning, uh, uh, you know, a bit about this uh, integrated library management system and I, I, I appreciate really the department and uh, Professor uh, Lalu Madam, Dr. Ravi Kumar and of course Dr. Sumer. Uh, uh, though we have a library which serves the entire you know campus, entire university, the faculty and the students and also the region. You know? So that's a great responsibility and of course we have uh, as you all know the academic department of uh, library information science. So uh, this is a combined effort of the Department uh, of Library Information Science and, of course, library supporting this uh, whole activity. And uh, for my guests uh, uh, from other parts of the uh, country and from abroad, uh, Nehu, as you know, is one of the premier uh, institution, a university established by an act of parliament. Uh, so it's a central university. We have, uh, you know, eight schools of studies and also about 42 departments all together. We have two campuses spread over the ent entire state of Meghalaya and all the major discipline subjects are taught here. And uh, uh, Nehu has, you know, uh, fairly, you know, good uh, standing in the academic fraternity uh, you know, uh, in the country. And also certain uh, topics are there where, you know, our colleagues are uh, publishing good papers, you know, of international standards and so on. And of course, uh, we are here on the initiative of uh, uh, the library and information science. That's also one of the uh, very leading, you know, uh, active uh, departments. Uh, of course, uh, 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 regarding this international webinar on Koha Integrated Library and Management System, uh, this is a very technical area, but nevertheless, this uh, high tech, you know, activity uh, of uh, bringing uh, together, you know, the various uh, uh, people who are working and also, you know, integrating the library management system. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, with our uh, clients, you know, and public uh, and government libraries, uh, we have, uh, I think, various activities which are being taken up here uh, about the data analysis migration that uh, will be talked about uh, mapping and migration of client data working on incoming support requests and uh, we have uh, you know the training sessions of koha you know and the customized features you know for the respective clients etc these are the uh, various you know uh, inputs uh, i would like to share as i am told and uh, of course uh, uh, the open service community work to develop new features and fix you know the various uh, bottlenecks bugs you know for public uh, you know uh, surveys all these uh, really uh, important, you know, uh, services which, uh, uh, this particular, uh, you know, our library and department they provide, and I'm sure under this uh, international webinar, this uh, uh, all these issues, uh, I think they are uh, going to be uh, taken up, and uh, especially about online public access uh, catalog, and uh, we have the GPL, and all coming up, you know. And as I learned, you know, a lot of acronyms are there, which are not Greek to me, but now I have learned, you know, a bit of that. We have that uh, FOSS, FOSS, ILS, so let's say something is completely new, these tools. And then uh, we have uh, other, you know, uh, kind of uh, uh, other devices, you know, other softwares and I mean, whatever you call it uh, regarding uh, this uh, Koha, uh, the, the various benefits which are provided. And uh, while uh, you know interacting with my uh, colleagues, 
hear about the speakers. Uh, I think I would. Uh, they have really chosen, uh, you know, uh, a host of speakers. Uh, they are uh, best in their respective fields, uh, from abroad and also uh, from within the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, uh, they have uh, had their their uh, their I mean, uh, 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 their various distinguished, you know, uh, recognitions in in in, uh, in their respective. Uh, their uh, contributions in this uh, particular uh, initiative. So I really indeed uh, wish, uh, I mean, thankful to you all for uh, making me also a part of this, at least this event and giving me an opportunity to welcome you all. And, uh, you know, the part of this, uh, the inaugural program or whatever you call it, the beginning of this uh, lovely session. Uh, so all my best wishes to you all. And I wish a very, uh, fruitful uh, deliberations and I'm sure, you know, as uh, any such uh, uh, activity does, I mean, should do, uh, you can compile the various inputs and the uh, suggestions and also the papers uh, uh, in a, you know, in a volume and then later on it can uh, be in public domain or it can be published and so on, so forth. So I think once again, I, I'm really indeed thankful uh, to uh, my colleagues organizing this and also bringing people from uh, different parts of the globe and the country from different uh, uh, regions you know, uh, on this uh, virtual platform. And uh, lastly, before I close, I would like to wish all of you the best of health and please stay safe. And uh, this activity, at least it gives one signal uh, to the humanity, to the academic fraternity that what come may, there may be pandemic, uh, though it's a dynamic in nature and uh, you know, you have you know, more and more people in different parts of the globe. They have been affected. We have fought together with this uh, Corona, you know, novel coronavirus. But ultimately, it's we who are going to win over this virus and uh, our academic business, you know, uh, that activities goes as, you, uh, you know, as usual. There may be a slight dip somewhere here because of this particular, you know, intervention. But nevertheless, uh, we will win over this. And uh, at the end of the day, I think uh, we will have uh, the things, you know, in a much better, bigger way. And I think the library or the information science as such, dissemination of uh, information for public good, you know, that also uh, indirectly makes all of you as a, a coronavirus. I don't say frontline barriers, but definitely you are definitely there somewhere, second line, third line, fourth line, whatever you call it, uh, in, you know, in the fight, uh, you know, against the corona. And I appreciate uh, all these, you know, your, such, uh, you know, uh, uh, at least joining this particular platform uh, today, uh, evening, afternoon, whatever you call it. So uh, once again, uh, I wish you all the very, very best and stay safe, healthy. And uh, I think uh, Nehu, uh, my, my request to my esteemed colleagues here and the, and the school and the deans that uh, we should, uh, I think, continue such activities, you know, more, uh, you know, uh, with more frequency, you know, because that way, uh, and on, you know, touching upon different aspects of uh, uh, information, library sciences, and other uh, various you know digital initiatives coming in here, and also you know those who could not join this uh, uh, time, I think they can also join on some other aspect of uh, you know such activities. So thank you once again, and I wish you all the very very best, and wish all this this conference the best of success. So namaskar once again, jai hind, God bless you all, khublai. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Now I call upon our dean, Professor Panda, sir, for formally inaugurate the webinar. Sir, it's over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ravi. Uh, the coordinator of this. Uh, am I audible, Dr. Ravi? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fine, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you a lot, actually, Dr. Ravi, the coordinator of this webinar, uh, my honorable vice chancellor, uh, Dr. Sivastav, sir, uh, Dr. Lalu, the head of the department, uh, Alex, Jessica, then uh, Dr. Parthasarathy, Dr. Sumer, Dr. Sunita, Dr. Bimal, and all other guests and participants who are participating in this very Important webinar. So, uh, my honorable vice chancellor has already given you a very warm welcome and he has already set the tone 
I think for this, uh, we will have to proceed. I mean to say, hereafter. Uh, so I will be again. Um, I think uh, uh, welcome. Uh, you welcome each one of you uh, to this webinar organized by uh, one of the department in my school. Uh, so once again, welcome to each one of you. Uh, I'm a development economist. So I will see the whole arrangement and even the relevance of this software uh, that is Koha uh, in the context of, uh, I think, uh, development. So I'll start with that. Uh, so let me start with that. So as we all understand, we say, I think development is all about expanding the vector of, uh, of every individual as well as the community. And uh, any, I think any existence of uh, information asymmetry, or you can say lack of proper flow of information, it is the greatest, the greatest hindrance to, uh, I think, development. So even you contextualize, I think this very software, OHA, and its management aspect, I think uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a powerful arrangement to, I think, to I can reduce that information asymmetry and then uh, the kind of divide that used to exist between, I think, uh, uh, users, non-users, and then uh, that's a, the great digital divide which used to exist earlier. I think soft opens an open source free softwares like Koha, I think they are a great enabler and they are going to, in fact, uh, significantly reduce that kind of an information asymmetry. So it's a great enabler of, I think, you know, development. So from that context, actually, I see Koha to be a very effective arrangement for reducing information asymmetry and in the process, expanding the capability base and vector of individuals, not only of individuals, it's all about also expanding the capability vector of communities. For example, I think uh, uh, Nehu would be more benefited today from this webinar. And similarly also, I think, uh, I think uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of uh, universities and uh, communities, they are getting the benefit of this uh, open source uh, free software OHA. So in that way, it's a big enabler. And it's, uh, it's a real, I think, it has the real empowerment of community as well as individuals in the, in the digital space, in the library space, and on the whole, on the development space. So having said that, uh, I just uh, touch up on, I think, uh, one or two, I think, points concerning the Koha software. And it is, I just had a, you know, uh, I'm not uh, a technical expert in this field. I had a little bit of uh, browsing on the net, but I found from there itself, this is, what, no, uh, this is a very important software which is open, the, the characteristics of the, you know, important uh, you know, the characteristics of this software is that it's open source, it has a freedom for all users, and there is no vendor lock, and it's completely web-based. I think these are all important characteristics of this software. And then it also supports virtual bookshelf. It can also give you a notice about, I think, uh, two emails, if there is an overduce, then uh, it, it's also, I think, it, it very effectively does, I think, fine management. And also, uh, this pat another characteristic of this software is patron empowerment. And then it's very convenient. It also takes care of the privacy. And budget management is also a, you know, a feature which is inbuilt in this uh, uh, software. Then uh, uh, it can also be, it has the you know, characteristic of uh, working offline also. Then it can also, the biggest advantage is that it can also be put on cloud. So, and so it's, and then it also support, another biggest advantage of this software is that it can support multiple libraries. For example, we have central, I know in Nehu, we are having a central library. We may be having our library in, let's say, Natura campus or for that matter, in different departments also, we may be having our departmental libraries. So this software has that, uh, I think, built in uh, feature that uh, it can easily support multiple libraries and sub-libraries. These are all some of this very important, I think, characteristics uh, of this uh, software. 
and uh, i but i now i i i feel that uh, what the world needs today is to reduce this digital divide and then make every user i think uh, uh, you know every you know and, and allow that space to every user so that he can that he can effectively use this software so for, so that's why when i look this software and it's an evolving story i mean to say it's an it's an evolving story thousands and thousands people i think they are using and then thousands and thousands of people i mean in days to come also i can say lots of people also in days to come they will be taking advantage of this software and in that sense actually it's as i said earlier the great enabler of for uh, i think uh, empowerment in the digital space in the academic space and it's also i mean so academics is all about uh, this free flow of information and then in a very i think systematic and in a very i know um, you know i can say very rational way and this software as i look at i mean i'm not a very technically sound person on this software but as i understand uh, i think there's all these features and these features in fact actually is going to make this software very very i think user friendly and from that context actually it will be, it, it's going to be a boon for the academic community and i'm thankful uh, to dr ravi and the department of library science uh, to sumer who have all taken this initiative and then uh, i'm going to say come up with this webinar i hope uh, this kind of webinars also in and this is the beginning i think uh, uh, jashika alex and all my esteemed guests who are there itself the panel here itself they all can help us in days to come and they can take it to every user of our university community including our students faculty and then our non teaching staff of course our library people as well are there it's to them only i think we can get the benefits of this uh, great uh, software uh, that's uh, oha so uh, with these words i think uh, i inaugurate uh, this uh, very important webinar uh, international webinar on poha integrated library management system and i'm sure that in days to come i think uh, uh, each stakeholder in our university will be if not proficient at least will be informed will be having something to do and something to uh, use us uh, of this software and uh, this although i think this is uh, this is an online webinar i hope dr ravi will i think once we overcome this covid 19 situation maybe dr ravi and dr lalu can invite jessica and alex i hope they can physically be here in our campus in our university campus and then if there is something left out here itself and the way we can help our university community with software uh i think we will be very very honored and we will be very very pleased this few words i inaugurate this webinar and wish uh, each one of you the you know the participants and the very deliberations they would be de deliberations in this webinar i think uh, very very success the best of uh, luck and the best of success thank you so much uh, for giving me this opportunity to ravi and dr ralu and dr sumer thank you thank you thank you very much sir so you have covered superficially all the aspects of koha sir it's very nice to hear from you sir thank you very much sir and uh, and you know uh, dr ravi ji i extend i join my colleague uh, professor pandar dean uh, in extending you know from my own side also from, on behalf of nehru the you know visit in a uh, for a visit of uh, jessica and alex you know when the things open up and Yes, sir. Oh, the yes, COVID. Sir. No more than looking forward, sir. We are looking forward, sir. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Please, can you carry on? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And also, Dr. Sunita ji, you know, whenever you know to visit us, you know. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, she has she has already visited the state, sir. She is not new there. <laughs> but uh, you didn't tell me, and we would have had tea together. But anyway, chali. Next yeah. time, yeah. I mean, this time, chali. Apply. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. thank you all uh, now we will directly go into the technical session so now i will formally uh, welcome the two speakers uh, today uh, we are pleased to welcome uh, ma'am jessica zaro and uh, alex buckley both of them are uh, in the core team of koha one is in uh, 
marketing and uh, educating profession uh, that is from biowater solution ma'am jessica and another one is alex buckley he is a uh, one of the core person in the development team uh, so these are the two important uh, speakers for today and we have uh, uh, four extreme panelists uh, from uh, uh, our our country uh, dr uh, sorry professor parsari mukhopadhyay from kalyani Uh, Dr. Sumer from our central library, Ma'am Sunita Barve from CSIR lab, and uh, uh, Vimal, uh, uh, open source uh, enthusiast and a blogger. He will be joining us very shortly. He has texted me, so uh, I formally welcome all the experts. Uh, with this few words, uh, now I hand over the feeder to Ma'am Jessica to take over the. so feeder and she will be talking on uh, the contribution of biowater solution to coha as a whole and open source community because she is a marketing profession and she is a educator she she will be the one of the best person for us to explain how, what biowater solution is uh, contributing to the coha as a whole and for open source community i welcome you ma'am and i hand over the feeder to you for your presentation thank you ma'am Thank you so much. I I am very honored to be here and and I'm excited to talk to you all about by water solutions and how we work with the Koha community. Okay, so we will be talking to you a little bit about um our involvement in the koha community and how we work with some of our partner libraries here in the USA again my name is jessica zero and um i have my masters of library and information science from here in the states and my role at bywater solutions is marketing and outreach I work very closely with our library partners both in the states and throughout the world to educate them both on Koha and the new any type of the new releases that will be coming out uh, in Koha as well. I want to talk a little bit about what we do at at Bywater Solutions. <clears throat> Our mission really is to empower libraries and help grow the Koha community. We are really dedicated um to participating in a forward thinking community um of open source users and we really strive to contribute positively to improve the Koha project for all users worldwide. Anything that we do here at Bywater Solutions, we give a hundred percent back to the Koha community. So any developments or work that that we do, we want to make sure that we share that with the community. As you all know, Koha offers really the the versatility and the flexibility um, that libraries, librarians, and staff and students can use to make their koha system thriving and vibrant um and part of their community. I have some great pictures here that I'll be sharing with you. Um after we train each one of our libraries, we provide them with a koha certificate that lets them know they've gone through training and they are ready to use the koha system. So these are two of our librarians holding their uh certificate. the bywater staff is spread throughout the united states we all work remotely um we are first advocates of open source um we love koha and second we work for bywater solutions um you know we're we're librarians we're book lovers um we're technology and data lovers um you know we're interested in things outside of the library like knitting and animals and um 
you know, gaming and, and whatever it may be. But most importantly, we are open source fanatics and we believe in the Koha community and growing the Koha community to be the best library management system um, in the world. These are a few of our, our team pictures from our staff retreat last year. Um, this is the group of our data migration librarians. These are our education librarians. This is our outreach and, and sales team. Our system team that works very closely with our libraries, um, along with our development team. Over here to the right, we have our support team that works very closely with our libraries um, and then our administration team um, that helps everything run in, in Bywater. A background about Bywater Solutions. Our company started in 2009 by providing support for libraries on the Koha open source integrated library management system. Over the last 11 years, we have migrated 2,000 plus libraries, helping them be active in the Koha community and working with them directly to get their data onto the Koha system and educating them on how to use the system and then providing support for those libraries. We support both public libraries, academic and university libraries, and special libraries. Over on the right-hand side here, this is one of our libraries in Texas, USA, um, and they were having a celebration, and this is a, a picture of all their library staff in front of their library. They have been on COHA for the last four years. Over the years, our Bywater team has um, pushed numerous patches and volunteer hours to the COHA community. We believe that it's so important to work directly with the COHA community members um, to provide the best um, support and education for our libraries here in the States. I love to share pictures of some of our libraries. Um, one of the roles that I do with Bywater is um, training some of our incoming library partners along with our education team. And here you can see some really smiling faces as our librarians are so happy they're holding that certificate as they've just completed uh, the Koha education part of their training. Our team spends three to four days at their library working hand in hand with the librarians and their staff to get them ready on the Koha integrated library management system. We take them through the OPAC and working with the public. We take them through circulation and patrons, technical services, so they get a comprehensive look at cataloging and authorities and serials and acquisitions. And then we spend time with them working on administration, going through reports so they can look at their statistics and data and then setting up their administration so they can have control of their COHA system. We truly believe in inclusivity in our open source communities. Over there on the right hand side, you'll see a picture of Micah. She is a librarian at the Lancaster Theological Seminary and has presented at numerous uh, Koha conferences, um, the Koha Khan International Conference. And then we also have a Koha conference here in the US called Koha US. Um, she is a very um, wonderful librarian that talks about her transition, not only to Koha, but to the open source community. She is a true uh, Koha advocate 
and a wonderful member of the Koha community. At Bywater, we believe that creating an inclusive workplace and community for Koha is important to us. We wanna help all of our libraries succeed so they can provide the best service to their patrons, to their students, and to their Koha users. We continue to listen to our library partners and work with the Koha community one-on-one -on -one to make sure that the best possible education and support is available for all users. I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the educational aspect um, at Bywater Solutions. We really focus on content and sharing that not only with our library partners here, but all Koha users worldwide. We build lots of videos and tutorials and blog posts that allow users to view information within Koha. So whether it's a tutorial on the circulation module or setting up a template in your cataloging module or running a report um, that shows you the number of records that are available in your collection. We publish all of this information on our website so users have access to everything worldwide. If you visit koha.bywatersolutions.com, you will see a long list of areas where you can explore more information. So if you are a new Koha user, you can come in and review any of our training material. And this will give you a wonderful breakdown and prepare you for getting ready for the Koha system. We go through and provide testing plans so your users can come in and feel absolutely comfortable using that Koha system. If you're a new staff member to Koha, we provide self-paced learning. And this allows you to come in and go through each module at your own pace. So you can learn more about acquisitions or cataloging or course reserves or reports or serials or circulation or cataloging. We also provide a section to explore Koha in general. So you can come in and if you're looking for a specific tutorial, you can jump right in. So if you're looking for something on notices, you can jump right in and look at the data that we have prepared for all users in the world that are using Koha. And this will provide a breakdown for you so you can you know, customize your notices and slips. Working with translating your notices for multiple languages in Koha and many other options. We also talk about any type of release. So Koha has a very wonderful release program where you have two major releases a year. During each of those releases, we provide a detailed explanation of what will be coming in that release, followed by webinars that are available for all users to watch. And this will give you a breakdown of what will be coming in your release. So you can watch these at any time. Finally, we have a breakdown of the Koha community in general. Any news that may be happening, any active enhancements or changes in the community, as well as developments. We have a weekly show called Monday Minutes where my colleague Kelly and I talk about an interesting subject that's happening within Koha. It's a brief video that will give you a good overlook at what's happening in the Koha system so you always know what's available for your library. 
We recently worked with our colleagues here in the United States that also provide support for COHA. We worked together to prepare a curbside pickup plugin. As we talked about earlier, the coronavirus and the implementations that it's taken on our libraries, we felt it was very important for COHA to provide the best resources for their library so they can provide a way for students and faculty and staff members to come in and retrieve the items from the library without having to have that close contact. And curbside pickup was a way for these libraries to utilize that right within the COHA integrated library system. We're constantly working with our library partners to listen to what they have to say and bring that back to the COHA community so COHA is the best library integrated open source platform out there. We talk a lot about the roadmap, which has a strong community focus for COHA. The first objective in the roadmap is to support the initiatives of the COHA community. The COHA community roadmap is set really in two ways. You have the feedback and suggestions that you get from the COHA community, where librarians and staff submit suggestions or patches to Bugzilla. So users can provide feedback and see what the next enhancement or change will be in the COHA system. The second way is through the work of the current release manager. You can always find information about the current release team and their focus on the COHA community wiki. With these two paths, Bywater Solutions works very closely with the COHA community so that their benefits will be for the COHA community in large and all users in the world for COHA. We are very active with the COHA community. Um, we collaborate with COHA users worldwide. Earlier this year, we participated in the COHA Global Bug Squashing Day. This was an opportunity for us to have um, members of our Bywater Solutions team uh, come on and talk about ways that Koha users can test things, they can discover things within Bugzilla, and they can feel comfortable going in and using a sandbox to test things in the Koha system. These were streamed live on YouTube just like today's session, where anyone in the world could come on and watch and chat with us. We also participated in a virtual hack fest for Koha, and we focused on the documentation piece of Koha, updating the manual. Librarians and users of Koha worldwide have the best knowledge of Koha and can help build a wonderful manual. And in this documentation session, we provided ways for our users to provide their information with the entire Koha community. I like to again, you know, share some more photos of some of our library partners here in the USA that have transitioned over to Koha ILS. You can see here, we have a few um, users here holding up their certificates that they have received after training. Um, and this is just a wonderful way for them to um, feel like they are part of the community um, and, and really be able to communicate with Koha community members worldwide. 
I want to thank everyone in the Koha community. Um, over on the right hand side, you'll see a picture that was from the Koakon International Conference in 2018. It was here in the United States in Portland, Oregon. Um, there were members from all over the world that came and did presentations on the Koha integrated library system. They talked about how they use Koha and they shared that information with all users um, and, and really showed a beautiful passion for the Koha community. I want to thank you for having me join you today and speak about the passion that Bywater Solutions has for the Koha community. All of us here at Bywater Solutions are part of an active member in Koha community. Some of us are past release managers. Some of us are release maintainers. Some of us are part of the documentation team. Some of us are part of the quality assurance team. Whatever we can do to provide any type of support or help for the Koha community, we are here for all users, whether you're in the United States of America or in the world. We look forward to working with some of you, and we hope that you can help explore Koha. Thank you so much again, and it was an honor speaking with you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for your brief presentation. It's really yet delighted. I hope uh, we as a Koha community will take forward the software to the new level. Uh, we in this part of the world have certain specific requirement. So those things uh, we will discuss after the presentation is there. So I hope I request you to join throughout the session. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank uh, you so much. Of, because of the time slab, uh, no, once the other speakers are finished, then we will take up the questions. Because in uh, YouTube and Facebook, we are getting a lot of questions. OK. So once the Alex uh, presentation is over, then we will go for the uh, panel discussion and question. I request you to stay on. OK. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, now I uh, take my privilege to introduce the next speaker. Our next speaker is uh, Alex Buckley. Uh, he is one of the important phase in Koha development team. Uh, he is very young and energetic. He holds a uh, graduation in information technology. Uh, so he he is the right person for us to say on any kind of a technicalities. Uh, so if we want any kind of an addition, deletion within the Koha, so he will be the right person to help us to clear it. And today he will be speaking on uh, evolution of Koha from the scratch. Uh, what we see as a Koha today was not there before 10 years. So he will give you us as an evaluation, uh, evaluation of how the Koha has evolved till today and what is future of Koha. So in this line, uh, Alex Buckley will be speaking. So I request uh, Mr. Alex to come on stage with his presentation. Thank you, sir. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for inviting me to speak. I'm very honored to speak. I'm just going to share my screen now. So yes, as has been mentioned before, my talk is the evolution of the Koha integrated library system, the way ahead, and going into more depth about Koha 20.05 version, which came out in May this year. Well, let's start off with who I am. My name is Alex Buckley. I am originally from Nelson, which is a small town in the top of the South Island of New Zealand. I started at the Catalyst Koha team in 2016 as a summer intern. I'm fortunate enough to work with an amazing team, including, including Chris Cormack, one of the original developers of Koha back in 1999. 
being a Koha developer has quite a big range of responsibilities and different things we work on. Some of the things that I'm particularly interested in are Koha implementations, integrations, doing upgrades between different versions of Koha, and of course, running trainings. I'm also an avid traveler. I have visited about 22 countries so far, and I haven't been to India yet, but I'd love to come and visit as soon as a COVID vaccine's been developed and travel's possible again. The photo on the slide is just from a beach nearby to Nelson, where I'm originally from. Yes, so as mentioned before, I'm going to be talking about the past, present and future of Koha. The way we're going to look at the present is by looking at 10 features, 10 new features and enhancements in Koha 20.05, which is currently available for you to install or upgrade to now. To look into the future, we're going to have a look at five features which will be available to you in Koha 20.11, which is going to be released in November. We're also going to have a look at some of the continued innovations of Koha libraries in New Zealand, both academic and public libraries. Let's jump into the history of Koha to start with. So Koha was started in, the Koha development started in 1999. The reason that it was that a new system was required was coming up to the new millennium, you may or may not remember, but there was a big worry that computer systems would fail due to the Y2K bug. So the Y2K bug was a problem in computers where only the last two digits of the year were stored as the year value. For example, 1998 would be stored as 98. Once the new millennium arrived, it was feared that computers would store the year 2000 as 00, zero and therefore interpret the date as, could possibly interpret the date as being 1900, and so wouldn't function correctly. In New Zealand, a small public library, the Horofenua Library Trust, which is based in Horofenua District, which I've just got a little circle on the map. It's in the North Island Horofenua District, basically up the coast from the capital city of Wellington. Horofenua Library Trust decided to contract a software development company, Katapul Communications, to develop a replacement library system for them. So a team of four developers spent many days and nights of hard work creating this new system, which went live on the 3rd of January 2000. The first day it was used by the general public was the 5th, when the library reopened. Horofenua Library decided to release the new system, this new system as an open source product, and this really influenced the naming of the new system. So what does koha mean? Koha is a Māori word, and it's basically a gift, but there's a connotation that something will be given back as well. The name is very apt because it really encapsulates what happened with the whole project. So Horofenua Library gifted the koha system to the world. In return, Many libraries all around the world, and there's 15,000 libraries or more that use Koha. And all the, many of these libraries contribute new features, fixes, and enhancements to Koha. So that gift has been, really has been reciprocated. So let's dive into the first five years or so after Koha was developed. So in June 2000, the Koha codebase was released as Koha version 1.0. In 2002, the first public library in the United States, Athens County Public Library, decided to migrate to Koha from their proprietary library system. 
in the process of doing so, they contracted, they paid for a bunch of new enhancements to be added to Koha. For example, the support for the MARC standard and implementing Z3950 import functionality. So libraries could import MARC bibliographic records and authority records from online, res online, data, online catalogues like the Library of Congress. In 2002, the Koha community also decided to switch to using Bugzilla as a bug tracking software. This is a place where people, and it's still being used now, it's a place where people could report bugs, add their code fixes for those bugs, and test other people's code fixes. So this is where most of the develop, this is where the development for Koha really happens. It's where the conversations happen about problems that people are seeing and fixes are developed and discussed and tested there. The image at the top right of the slide is an early circulation interface using a system called CERC TK. And below it is the acquisition interface where you can see you can add a new bibliographic record in there. In 2004, Koha version 2.0 was released, and this added a bunch more functionality, including acquisitions and serials functionality. In 2006, the first KohaCon was held. Jessica alluded to KohaCon in her talk. And it's, it's a really fabulous uh, event. Basically, it's an annual gathering of anyone who is interested in Koha. It's a chance to share knowledge about Koha and make friends within the community. 2006 also had some big technical changes happen to Koha. A new search engine called Zebra was implemented, and this really sped Koha search, catalog search up because instead of doing a database search, there was a dedicated search engine. In 2011, another case of Koha being sped up, the load times was introduced, which was copying some of the bibliographic records, some of the big bibliographic data out of MARC and into dedicated database fields. This meant when displaying mark, displaying bibliographic record data, for example, title, instead of having to extract the title, the 245A subfield, from a great big blob of mark data, all Koha had to do was get the value from the title column. So this column had just one value title. Extracting that is a lot quicker than extracting a subfield value from a great big mark blob. In 2016, Koha's version numbering conventions changed. The new system became the first two digits denoted the year of release. For example, 16 for the year 2016. And then, after a decimal point, the second two digits denoted the month of release. So, 05 for May, meaning the first version that was released after this naming convention change, 16.05. That name tells you it was released in May of 2016. And this naming convention has carried on since. So there's two major releases of Koha every year, one in May and one in November. So every year there's going to be, so for example this year we've got version 20.05 released in May and we've got another version coming out in November, 20.11. So now we're up to the present. Let's take a look at how that first Koha library, Hora Whenua library, con has continued to innovate over the last 20 years because they're still using Koha now. 
I've just linked down the Horofenua Library URL. So it's horofenua.library.org.nz. And I highly recommend that you open a browser and have a look at that because it's really, it's gorgeous uh, OPAC they've got. So what I'd like to discuss with you is this major redesign they did of their OPAC. It was a couple of years ago now. And the reason that, that this redesign was done was for Horofenua Libraries. Koha really is the homepage and jumping off point for all of their library content services. They wanted to ensure that content in the Koha homepage was linked to other events and themes that the library was involved in. They also wanted to encourage library patrons to use the online resources that the library was paying for. The Horofenua Library team worked with the Catalyst Koha team, which I'm in, and the Catalyst Design team. We worked out a relatively low maintenance way to highlight the most important library content that the library team was really keen for patrons to see, whilst also implementing a rebrand and giving their OPAC a modern usable page layout. So this is the top of their OPAC. As you can see, it's colourful, it's clean, and it's really beautiful. So I'd like to take you through some of the highlights of it. So they've got a book slider, which is below the search input at the top of the page. Many of you will be familiar with the idea of a book slider. Usually these are to show new content, so new books that have been added to the catalogue. Horofenua have been focused on making their catalogue current and topical by displaying a curated list of library items, usually around a particular topic. So rather than just displaying a random assortment of new books, what they do is display in the slider lists of related books, as the example we've got here at the moment. This book slider, we implemented this book slider functionality by linking a book slider with the Koha lists feature, meaning the library team can make a list of related topics, of items of a related topic, and then regenerate the book slider to display this. So as the year goes on and events happen, Matariki, uh, Christmas, various different events throughout the year, the list, the slider can change with related items to that event. So further down the page, below the book slider, we've got drop downs, and these are for just arrived and coming soon. So one of the key features for intuitive software design is being able to help users find information as quickly and as easily as possible. So these just arrived and coming soon drop downs are example of making an, of an intuitive design. Patrons are able to immediately narrow down the just arrived or coming soon books that they're looking at by collection code. So instead of having to wade through every type of just arrived book for adult fiction items, they can just click on ad adult fiction and see all the recently arrived adult fiction items. These collection code drop downs, the collection codes in the drop downs aren't hard coded. Instead, they're populated via the OPAC user JS system preference and the staff client. That calls a file, it calls a custom file, which queries the database in Koha to retrieve all the collection codes that are in the system. This means that librarians don't have to come along and re-add a new collection code to these drop-downs. 
as the library continues to get more collections. This is all dynamically done in the background. Librarians don't have to do anything. The next thing I'd like to talk about is the top, basically at the top of the library page, there are links, one of which is to the branch and hours. One of the, one of the links is to branch and hours. When you click on that, it takes you to the bottom of the page and shows what you see here, which is the library, library hours block. So Horofenua Library was getting a lot of calls from patrons asking them, what are the library hours? So the library team really wanted to make it clear and easy for patrons to be able to find this information. But they didn't want all this library content right at the top of the OPEC, of, at the top of the OPEC. If I go back a few slides, this is the top of the OPEC. They didn't want this library hours information cluttering up this part of the page because users generally form an impression of a website within about 50 milliseconds. So you really have to grab them and having an uncluttered, clean and colorful design like this is more likely to do that. But having this branch, branches and hours link at the top right, basically, below, if you look below lists, when the, live, when the patrons click on that, they are basically redirected to the bottom of the page where they can see all that library hours information. But also by having this redirection within a page, it's keeping the top of the OPEC nice and clear, but it also tells a patron when they visit the OPEC within that 50 milliseconds or a few seconds that they first look, that the branches and hours information is available for them on the site should they need it. And the next bit I wanted to talk about was the online resources page. As I previously mentioned, Horofenua Library spends a lot of money providing its patrons with access to external databases and resources. They wanted to provide patrons with a single port of call when looking at online resources that are available to them. So they asked our team to look at creating an online resources page. As you can see at the top of the OPEC, you've got various different links. You've got my account, ebooks, online resources, and branches and hours. If you click online resources, you'll be automatically prompted to log in if you haven't already. Once you've successfully logged in, this online resources page appears. It's restricted to registered library patrons. So that is the reason for needing the login because the library wants to give access to its own signed up patrons. But oftentimes these online databases charge on the amount of traffic they get from a particular institution. Therefore, you might not necessarily want to make it open to access to them open from anywhere within the world. The good thing about this page is it's really easy to use. So under our digital resources, you've got everything categorized, health, biography, music. You click on those and that takes you directly down to the section with the various links related to that. So for example, arts, you've got three different links there related to arts. So you don't have to go scrolling and get scrolling for a whole lot of links, guessing what topic a particular link pertains to. Now we wanted to make this as easy as possible, this page as easy as possible for the Horofenua library team to be able to edit. So what we did is implemented a local use system preference this is where the team can either edit the HTML code themselves, or if they don't want to do that, they can just change things like the, the links within the href tags. If you can see where my mouse is, you've got a href. That is a URL. They could just substitute in a different URL and change the link text. 
by adding this as a system preference rather than hard coding it in, we're giving as much we're giving complete control to the library team as possible. Now let's take a look at 10 wonderful new features in Koha 2005, which like I mentioned earlier, you can install and upgrade to right now. So add a context sensitive report, report a problem process. So beside this, I've got a bug number. So this is basically a reference. If you go to the Koha Bugzilla site, you can enter this number and it will take you directly to the bug report where the problem, where someone asked for this feature or reported a particular problem in Koha and then people discuss fixes for it, someone's attached a fix for it and then people have, you can see where it's been tested and where it's been added into Koha. So it can give you some more information by looking at that bug number in Koha Bugzilla, and I'll give you the link for that a bit later on in the in my presentation. So this report a problem feature, basically what it does is it adds a report a problem link, and I've highlighted in yellow, at the bottom of every OPAT page. This means library patrons are able to report problems they encounter directly to the staff they don't have to email the staff. They don't have to try and find a library staff member within the library to tell them. They can just click this link and then a page appears, a form appears. In this form, between clicking the link and the page appearing, you do have to log in. But then once the form appears, you can write down what a brief summary of the problem you encountered and then in this message, section a bit more information about the problem so some examples i can give you for the sort of problems that patrons might report are if they're doing a catalog search and they can't find what they're looking for or they know that a particular title is in the catalog but the search function the search feature just isn't returning it for them Another one could be if some styling in the OPEX looking a bit odd to them, some buttons are greyed out or weird icons appearing over buttons, things like that. Once the patron in the OPEX submits that form, librarians will, it will be flagged to librarians. Basically, at the bottom left of the staff client, I've just got a little cut out of the staff client here. On the home page at the bottom left, you're going to see OPEC problem reports pending link. So this is flagging to librarians right away that one person has reported a problem. If you click that link, this page, this form on the right appears titled OPEC problem reports. Here you can see some more information about this problem. You can see the message about what the actual problem was, how the user described it. You can see the page that the problem appeared, which is pre-populated for the OPAC patron. They don't have to write in, this problem appeared on page X. This is, Koha does that for them. Also, Koha is telling you when it was created and its status. So librarians can now, if their market is viewed, it won't be shown this OPAC problems report pending won't have a one there because it's shown to be viewed. It's no longer pending. And then the librarian can go and investigate. If they find that this problem is no longer occurring or they ask their support vendor or IT team to have a look and they fix it, then they can come along and click mark closed in the future. That means that the problem is no longer valid or it's been fixed. So another great enhancement in Koha 2005 is the ability to move and reorder subfields in the basic editor. So this is for, your, for you catalogers out there. So for example, you might want to move the 245 subfield C 
above subfield B. So that's what I've got in this example here. So when you click on a field, as I've done with the subfield C here, it goes, it basically, that whole line turns grey and you can slide it up and down and drag it around to where you want it to be. The great thing about this feature is that the changes you make will persist after you save this record. So for example, if I save this record as I've got it now, with the order being 245A, then C, then B, then H, and I save that, then if I come back tomorrow, revisit and edit this record, that same ordering will have persisted. It won't go back to the default. So it's going to, for this record, the preference you've set will stick. So this is a really useful feature, especially in these days of coronavirus. So the Koha community, they really reacted very quickly to the coronavirus pandemic. So within about two days, the community added the ability to do, bar, uh, to do bulk changes of due dates of existing records, of existing issues rather. So many libraries, I'll tell you why this would be a useful feature. Many libraries needed to extend their current issues extend the due dates, because as a lot of countries went into lockdown and libra libraries closed, I'm not sure if this is the case for you in India, but it was for many libraries here in New Zealand. With the libraries closed, patrons wouldn't be able to return a book, return their items, so it wouldn't be fair to mark items as overdue and apply fines when patrons physically can't actually return those books. Before this tool that I'm going to tell you about was added, the only way that an existing issue, an existing checkout, could have its due date extended was by a SQL update query being run against the database. This would mean libraries would often have to ask their support vendor or in-house IT team to run the query on the Koha server. But adding this fabulous new tool under the tools module means it gives the power back to librarians. So the way you get to it is click on tools module and then under patrons and circulation you've got batch extend due dates. So the batch extend due, batch extend due dates page lets you define a certain number of conditions to control what current issues you actually want to extend. Because you might not want to extend every single one of your current issues into the future. There might be some conditions. You might want to only extend some of them. So the things that you can limit on are the patron category, so what type of patron first, uh, what, what type of patron an item was issued to, for example, staff members you want to extend their their issue due dates but not maybe another type of member another one you can limit on is libraries so in this example i might only want to extend the issues from centerville library and then we've got due date from and to so this is the original due date so you might choose only extend current issues which are due within the between the 1st and the 24th of August. And then we've got a section further down, new due date. So this is, you can either set a specific due date, which all of the issues which meet these conditions at the top, they'll all be due on the specific date. Or you can just add a number of days that they'll be extended by. So you might say all issues that were checked out to a patron from Centerville Library that were originally due between the 1st till the 24th of August should have 30 days added to them. So they'll be due 30 days from that original due date.
So, add a discount process to accounts. So why would you want to apply a discount to a fine on a patron's record? Well, it could be something, some examples I could think of, and I discussed this with my team earlier today. Uh, let's say a library charges $2 for per fiction book that is issued. Now, if a patron issue uh, checks out five different fiction books, then you might want to give them a discount because they're obviously a frequent user of the library. So this, you can apply a discount. It's not really a write-off. You're just applying a discount given specific conditions on a case-by-case -case basis. So you might say to the person that's checking out five fiction books that you give them a 20% discount, meaning instead of owing the library $10 for issuing those, they owe $8. So this new feature adds this new um, apply discount button, which you will only see if you have, this feature also adds a new sub permission to staff, which you'll need to enable for staff patrons if you want them to see the supply discount button. If staff patrons have this permission, then they'll see the button, and then when you click on it, a pop-up will appear. And into this, you can define how much percentage, how much discount you want to give them. Now, this is an interesting point. When I was first reading about discount, I thought it was you could put in a certain percentage, like I've done in the screenshot, 20% but you can't actually, so you have to put in an actual value to take off. So I can't put 20% in, but I could put two in, take $2 off the amount charged of $10. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. Add a point of sale screen to allow anonymous payments. So many libraries now sell things, for example, a library might be selling old books, which it has weeded from its catalogue. But instead of just throwing them out, they sell them for maybe one or two dollars each. So in Koha 2005, you can now basically record and track these transactions through a point of sale screen. Basically, this is adding functionality to Koha to be able to sell things, not just lease out or not just lease out books, but to actually sell items as well. The benefit of this is, if a library is selling something, they can use their existing Koha system rather than having to use a separate sales system. So what you'll have to do is when you upgrade to Koha 2005, you would need to enable a system preference, which is called Enable Point of Sale System Preference. If you go to this bug number, 23354, you can find some more documentation on the exact steps you have to go, but I'll just take you through the general overview of this feature. When you click on that Point of Sale screen from the Staff Client homepage, you're going to see the page where you can record your sales. On the left of the page, we've got items for purchase. <clears throat> In here, I've got old books. Now, this is a debit type that I've created. So it's not, when it says items for purchase, it isn't items from the catalog. This is going to display debit types, which are basically a charge that you can apply and you can define that in the administration module. So I've created an old books debit type and I click add and then it displays in the this sale area here. In the old in the debit old books debit, debit type, I set a default price of two dollars. So that's why my field here has got two dollars set. The amount tendered is the amount that the patron is actually giving you. This is the cash they're handing to you. When you write this in, Koha will automatically populate the change to give. 
so you know exactly how much change you need to give. You can also record the payment type and the cash register that this payment occurred at. That's another feature in the administration module, along with the debit type that you'll want to set up when using this feature. So this point of sale page, if you click on the left, you've got registered details linked. If you click that, you can see a transaction history. So you can see all the old books that have been sold. And you can see more information about the register, how much money came in, how much money went out. So that gives you a really good idea of how much, how many old books have been sold, how much money's changed hands. It's very useful statistics there. Now, add an ability to suggest purchase from existing titles. So in Koha 2005, it's even easier for patrons to request a to request their Koha library to purchase more copies of a title that's already in the catalog. When you do an OPAC search now and you click on a title, for example, my Animal Poems book here, down the side you're going to see a, per a Suggest for Purchase button, which I've got highlighted in yellow. When you click that, you're automatically redirected to the Purchase Suggestion page. Now, because you're Asking, you're basically asking the library to buy another copy of this title. But instead of making the patron having to write all the information, the title, the copyright date, the ISBN, the publisher, publication date, item type, instead of asking, forcing the patron to do that, Koha automatically pre-populates pre all these fields for them. So it's a nice time-saving tool, really, and it just makes it easier for patrons to request another copy of a book that's already in stock. For example, there might only be a couple of copies for it, and it's clearly always on loan and a very popular book, and the patron would like to request some more copies of it in the library. So, add a payout process to accounts. If a person's been a patron for a library for a few years, really, they can easily build up an outstanding credit with the library. In other words, the library owes them money. Now, an example for when this might happen could be if you, for example, have a long overdue book, the library is marked it lost, and they've charged you the replacement price for it. You go along and pay that replacement price of, say, $20. But you later find that lost item and you return it back to the library. Now, at this point, the library owes you that $20 back. This payout process provides a library with a way to pay out these outstanding credits, in other words, give money directly back to the patron. And the way it does it is by adding a Issue Payout button under the Transaction tab. And you'll see this in the Accounts page for a patron. So you can see here I've got a credit of $10. Now that can either sit on my account and it will be balanced against any fines I get, or the library could pay that $10 directly back to me. This issue payout button introduces that functionality to let the library do just that, pay me the money back. When a staff member clicks on that button, the, a new pop-up issue payout is going to appear. Into that, they can write in how much money is being handed back to the patron and the transaction type, for example, cash or credit. And this information, this payout, 
is going to be kept so it, people in the future reference for future reference people can come back and see all the payouts that have happened so we've got add batch operations to staff interface catalog search so this is an easy way for people to be able to do a search they might do a search for book uh, for fish and let's say they notice that the that the top three search results need modifying. So they can just tick these checkboxes to the side of each one, and then they can click edit, and they can suggest, uh, click batch edit. In here, they can run a mark modification template across all three of them. So it's just a really quick way to make quick changes from the search interface. So course reserves is a feature that some of the academic libraries, maybe in India, use. It's a way to bulk reserve a bunch of books that will be used for a particular course. A bug that had annoyed a lot of people for a while had been that, that you weren't able to remove checked out items from a course reserve. So it's, checked out items might not necessarily, should, shouldn't necessarily stay as a course reserve because they're checked out to someone. They're not available to that course at that moment. But this bug 15377 fixes that. It adds the re a working remove button. So if you are on a course reserve page and you see a bibliographic, you see a record which is status of checked out, you can click remove and that will get rid of it. So that was something that had been bugging people for a while and it's great to see that fixed. And a really good feature here. So results per page setting for catalog search and staff client to NOPAC. So before Koha 20.05, patrons had no ability to change the number of results that, that display for OPAC searches. This was set, something that was set by the staff and the Koha staff interface. But this is a really handy tool and it gives a bit more control back to the patrons. So now you'll have a results per page drop down and the patron can choose themselves how many results they want to see. It's not something that's been chosen for them. So if they want to see, instead of having to scroll through lots of different pages, they want to choose the maximum 100 per page of results, then they can save a bit of time for themselves that way. Now let's jump in briefly and have a look at five new features coming in Koha 20.11, which, as I mentioned, is coming is going to be available in November. So group circulation by item type. So this is a really good feature. It lets you create group together a bunch of different item types and then apply circulation rules across all of them. So for example, I might make a book item type that would be the parent, and then I might have child item types of fiction book, graphic novel, and non-fiction book. Then, in my circulation and fine rules under the administration module, I can set a rule just for the group, the parent of books, 10. I can also set limits so this is the limit for how many you can have out of books of any type. I can also set limits for the individual item types below that. So for fiction book, I could have a limit of 10. For graphic novel, a limit of 10. And non-fiction book, a limit of 10. What this setting combination will mean is that a patron could check out 10 fiction books or 10 graphic novels or 10 non-fiction books, but what they can't do is check out 30 books across, 30 items across all books, because although fiction book, graphic novel and non-fiction book all add up to 30, we've said for the books group, you can only have a maximum check out of 10. So this is a really helpful way to just limit down if you've got 
a bunch of different item types, but you want to control how many across all those item types, how many can be checked out to a particular patron. You can now do that with this new feature that's coming in November. So this add ability to choose if lost fee is refunded based on the length of time item has been lost. So in Koha 20.11, there'll be a new system preference called no refund on lost returned items age. Using it, you're telling Koha, don't, don't refund lost items. If the lost item that's just been returned has been marked lost for more than a specified number of days. So I've specified five days. So let's have an example to get a better idea of how this works. A lost item has been returned six days after it's been marked lost. As six is greater than five, that replace the fees that I accrued when it was marked lost are not going to be refunded. But if I return a lost item four days after it was marked lost, then the lost item fees would be refunded because four is less than five. The great thing about this new feature is it basically gives libraries a third option in refunding lost items. Because before Koha 20.11, you could either, there was a binary choice. Libraries could either refund an item or not refund it. But now, libraries can refund if a particular condition has been met. In other words, it's only been lost for a short amount of time rather than a long amount of time. So it just gives libraries a bit more control. In Koha 20.11, we've got some four new sub-permissions added to patrons um, for acquisitions. So libraries can specify if staff members are able to delete baskets, delete invoices, edit invoices, or reopen closed invoices. This means that libraries have a bit more control over what staff, uh, staff members are able to do. So you might allow people to delete, but you might allow people to manage a fund, but they're not allowed to reopen closed invoices, for example. It just, more of these granular, granulated and smaller and more specific permissions just give libraries a bit more control. And if they want someone to have all of the sub permissions, all they have to do is click Acquisitions Management, and that will give them permission to do anything in the Acquisitions module. So, quote, quote of the day. So, this is a feature that's already been in the OPAC for a while, but in Koha 20.11, it's being added to the staff client. So, why would staff client why would staff members require to see the quote of the day? Well, when it was originally when it was originally requested in Bugzilla, people suggested the requesters suggested that instead of sending out an email to all staff members from, say, a library manager, it would be helpful to be able to share changing information every day. So tips on how to use Koha, a new tip every day, to display that on the staff client homepage. Because emails, as we know, are not always read by everyone every day. So for, to make this quote of the day display, and it will display basically on the left-hand side of the staff client, it, um, the quote of the day system preference will have to be enabled. And this is a really fantastic feature, or enhancement rather. So this one is moving editable regions in Koha. So basically in Koha, there's various editable regions which form the OPAC. So you might have the OPAC main user block, which is the middle region of the OPAC. Previously, you could librarians could edit this, which was great, but it was stored in a system preference, meaning 
doing it, translating the content of it was quite tricky and it did require some code conditional statements to say if the language currently enabled in the OPEC is English, display this version, and if it's Māori, display this version. But that has changed with this new feature. So over the last few years, various different editable regions, so we've got OPEC News, OPEC NavWrite, OPEC Header, OPEC Custom Search, OPEC Main User Blog, OPEC Credits, OPEC Login Instructions. These have been moved from being system preferences to being news items. So now you can, I got Te Reo Māori installed on my machine and I've got English. So I could make either, I could make two OPEC main user blocks, an English version and a Te Reo Māori version. And then depend, when I'm on the OPEC, depending on what language I've got enabled and I'm viewing the OPEC on, Koha will display a different OPEC main user block. So it really does make it incredibly easy for people to translate custom content that they've got displaying on their OPEC. And in Koha 2011, the new editable regions that were copied across are OPEC credits, OPEC custom search, and OPEC login instructions. And more bits and pieces will be moved across in the future as well, because this is an ongoing process. So the Catalyst Koha team has migrated two academic libraries to Koha over the last few years. And these two libraries are Toi Ohomai Institute of Technology and the Waikato Institute of Technology, which is also known as WinTech. So I'd just like to cover a few features that were a few enhancements or interesting workflows we've done for them, because I know the academic libraries uh, there are a lot of Koha academic libraries in India. So one of the features that we did for both Toyohomai and WinTech was the recalls module. This is a uh, feature that my colleague Alicia Amohia has written, so it's a fully fleshed module in Koha. I guess you can think of a recall as basically a hard reserve. When you place a recall on an item, you're prompting the current borrower to return the item sooner than they otherwise would have. The reason for this is that Koha brings the, alters the due date, bringing it forward. So a recall differs from a reserve because with a recall, the due date is brought forward, whereas with a reserve, you, the due date doesn't change so that the person who's reserved it has to wait until after that Basically, they might have to wait until that due date or after. A recall, a reason you'd place a recall is if you need an item urgently. So in an academic context, it might be you're a student, you've got an assignment due at the end of the week, and you have a required reading, a textbook for that assignment. You have a look on the bibliographic record, as the flow chart shows, and you see that all the item holdings are currently issued but you really need this textbook. So you place a recall on one of the items. That item's due date is brought forward, meaning it's going to be due sooner. Now, the current borrower needs to be told that their due, the due date of their item has been brought forward, and Koha does that with this feature. A notice is sent to the current issuer, the current borrower, telling them, the new due date and asking them to return it before that time. When the recalled item is returned, Koha will then send a pickup notice to the patron who placed the recall, asking them, basically telling them the item you recalled is now due, is now ready for you to pick up. Another thing that's important to mention, and is a bit of a similarity between recalls and reserves, is that with recalls, you can either place a biblio-level recall or an item-level one. So in this example here, I can place it, I can recall the next available item. So if there's multiple items that are issued, 
I can recall the next available one. Koha should then go through and look at what, which one of the currently issued items will be due soonest. That one will have its issue date brought forward and the borrower of that issue will be informed, please return your book by this new issue date, by this new due date. Alternatively, if there's a specific copy that I want, for example, if it's a serial or a specific, or a specific um, textbook edition, you can click recall a specific item and then choose the specific copy that you're after. So recalls like reserves, you can either do a biblio level one, recall the next available, or you can choose a specific item that you want to recall. And this other one that I wanted to cover, and, and basically a workflow that we implemented for WinTech, was that they had the requirement that basically they, when students enroll, they're added to the student management system which I'm representing in my little diagram over here. Now, they didn't want to have, to, the library team didn't want to have to manually add that student into Koha as well. What the team were after was that when a new student enrolled and they were added to the student management system, the student management system would automatically talk to Koha and add the item that way. This is a new functionality in Koha. Basically what we've got, the student management system does a call to the Koha RESTful Patron API. An API is an application programming interface. You can basically think of it as a chunk of code that other systems can talk to and run and execute. So the student management system is calling the API v1 patrons API and ask it, can you please make, can you make a, a new patron? The student management system is going to hand over key value pairs. So it's going to hand over borrow, uh, it's going to hand over first name as, for example, Alex, surname Buckley, um, date of birth, etc. So it does a post request, it is, it's calling Koha and handing it a bunch of data. Koha is going to add the patron. And then if that has been a success, then Koha is going to hand back to the student management system a basically a response which has the 201 status, meaning that this has been successful, a new patron has been added to the system. The benefit of this is that librarians don't have to come along and manually add patrons to Koha. Once a student is enrolled, the student management system talks to Koha and automatically adds a, and the talking between the two automatically adds a patron record in Koha. So it saves the library team some time, it saves the student some time. And this RESTful Patron API is this functionality is in stock Koha. Anyone can use it. It's not a customization. So we're almost there at the end. I just wanted to cover how you too can contribute to Koha. So we love having new people come into the community and contribute. And some ways I'd really recommend that you do that. Uh, firstly, register account in Bugzilla. So I've got it over here. So earlier, I had a bunch of different, um, some of the different features I was talking about had a bug number. This is the site you can go to, to have a look at, um, to look those bug numbers up to get some more information about them. But the reason you'd want to register for Bugzilla is so that you can create bug reports. So that's reporting either a software problem you've encountered in Koha, or maybe you've got an idea for a new feature that you'd really love added to Koha. Make a bug report, add your request in there. You can also test other people's fixes. This could be text fixes, code fixes, all sorts of different things. Um, 
or you could add your own fixes. For example, if you have a bit of knowledge of code, you could add a code fix, or you might want to do some changes to um, maybe headings or um, add various different things. You don't have to be techni really technical to be able to do uh, a give put a patch onto Koha Bugzilla. Another thing that I'd really highly recommend is to how we're translating Koha. So Koha is written in English, but it's translated into many different languages. So if you go to translate.koha-community.org slash projects, you can go in there and you can very easily create an account and you can do some translation from English to another language that you know, and you can really help Koha's usage around the world by making it more translated and easier for people to use that way. Another suggestion I'd highly recommend is to hop into the Koha IRC channel. That's basically, it's an old, it's it's an old system where you can type messages to each other, but it's where most of the Koha community, it's where a lot of the Koha community hang out. If you have a question about Koha, you can hop in there and ask a question. The community is so lovely, they'll very likely give you some ideas or help you out, or just come in and say hi. And then also register for KohaCon 2020. And I'd like to talk briefly about KohaCon 2020. So as I mentioned before, KohaCon is an annual gathering of members, basically anyone that's interested in Koha. It's really important to note and to keep in mind that you don't have to be an active or current Koha user. You can just be someone that's interested. You can register. We're going to be in the KohaCon 2020 is going to be our team, the Catalyst Koha team is hosting it this year. But due to the COVID situation, what we're going to do is a hybrid conference. So what it's going to be is most likely, depending on the COVID alert levels in New Zealand, which are changing quite a lot at the moment. But what it's going to most likely be is people within New Zealand are going to be able to come together and attend talks, but we're also going to be streaming everything, meaning you can take part online, the registration's free, and it's fabulous because what you can do is you can hear from some of the long-standing Koha community members. These are people that have been working on Koha and now are inside out, and they've been working on it for years, decades in many cases. And it's also a really great social event. You can meet lots of new people, you can make friends, and the Koha community is so lovely, it's really worth doing. And that brings us to the end. So I really hope that you've got some you've got some inspiration for the new features that we've got available right now in Koha 20.05. You're excited about the new features coming in uh, Koha 20.11, coming in November, and that I hope I've encouraged you and inspired you to get, contribute to Koha and to attend KohaCon and to get involved in the community because they're such a wonderful group of people. It's really worth doing. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Alex. It was a wonderful presentation. So you have went into the length and breadth of Koha's uh, development and what future Koha is giving for us. And you have really highlighted all the bugs and how the bugs has been uh, filled up. And you have also highlighted about all the new features that is going to come in the next uh, version. We are all delighted. And we are Seeing forward for the new version. Uh, thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Now, now we will move to the next uh, part of this event. Uh, we have panel discussion. So our esteemed members are all on the screen now. So I formally welcome all the panelists. I once again welcome Ma'am Sunita, Professor Partha, Partha Sir, Vimal, Dr. Kumer. 
I welcome all of you. Uh, each panelist uh, have time between 10 to 15 minutes to put their opinions. And after that, we will go for the question answer session. Uh, so now I request Professor Parthasarvi sir from Kalyani University to uh, start the discussion in the direction. So we have the discussion in on Koha on the topic acceptance of Koha by Indian community and what we as a users in this part of the globe is expecting from Koha. So under this broad perspective, I uh, request all the panelists to ponder on it and see what we can contribute to the Koha community. Sir, I uh, welcome you, sir. I request you to take on the feed. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Ruby. Ruby is a friend of mine. And uh, thank you, Jessica and uh, you know uh, Alex also. I hope I am audible enough. Yeah, yeah, fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, <clears throat> let me share my screen. Can you see it, Ravi? Ravi? Can you see it? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, Are you yes, able sir. to see it? Okay, fine. Yes, yes, fine. Fine, fine. Okay, fine. So, first of all, uh, let me uh, thank uh, all the dignitaries on the screen and off the screen. Uh, because I came to know that Chris is also in the audience. Uh, you know, he is a, a very good friend of mine also. Now, uh, 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 thank you Alex, especially uh, for the journey down to the memory lane. Because I have been uh, working with Koha, I have been used Koha as an enthusiast here, uh, uh, right from the version uh, 2.2. And hopefully you can remember this particular interface of uh, Koha 2.2. Uh, uh, I started working with Koha right from uh, 2004 and right from the version 2.2.1. Then uh, with the version 2.2.9 came, I took uh, uh, Koha as a part of my PhD project translated Koha in my native language Bengali and integrated one particular you know modules you can see the last that is called uh, community information services that means how public libraries can provide day-to-day -day livelihood information uh, to the users uh, information related to the finance health housing etc so integrated that particular module inside Koha but when uh, I came up with my PhD uh, project, this you can see the Koha uh, integration of the Koha search interface in the community information service portal that I developed for uh, Lat Government Spengal uh, to uh, the particular project and integrated the model in their uh, uh, it's called uh, uh, state secretaries. It's, it's the public library system in the state state of West Bengal. So later on, you know, when I uh, ready with particular project, then Doha uh, already entered in a uh, 3.8 cycle and it, uh, many things changed really. Okay. So uh, this is the retrospect or my, uh, you know, uh, attachment to the Koha. As Ravi requested, Alex pointed out also. I think uh, Partha has left because of uh, network issues. Uh, we will see for some time. Otherwise, we will move with the next panelist.
I do hope you can see it now because uh, in uh, this uh, this time of the evening, you know, we are facing you know huge bandwidth problem in India. Uh, that uh, parts of the system actually. I hope probably uh, I am reconnected now, yeah, yeah, and you can see it. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. So my point is that in the whole, if we analyze the whole global scenario, we are actually passing a rapid trend, uh, transformation, uh, transformation phase. So we are basically moving from the integrated library system to progressive library system, then the library service platform. So where uh, everything will be, uh, as, you, uh, as you can see in the last column, library service platform, how it is different from the integrated library system and the progressive integrated library system. I personally consider Koha as the progressive library information integrated library system and uh, uh, we are basically in the global uh, scale we are moving towards the LSP. So most of the challenges lies with the Koha and any open source ILS presently how we can move from the simple integrated library system to the LSP system in future because library is a con complex you know information domain we need to uh, manage many things actually I will be coming uh, to uh, tell you but as Alex proposed in its uh, last uh, few slides the role of the REST API based integration with different other softwares possibly the, that particular thing will be you know will be the will be in the driving force in future and uh, already the sign and symbol already we are ha we are having from different kind of global products like world share management from OCLC, Qualiole and the Folio. In fact, both Qualiole and Folio will be amazed to know when they will be releasing. Qualio is already Quali is already a old code base. That particular code base is utilized by Folio and Folio or Quali itself and the folio in future they will not have their in 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 alternative scenario what to do they will expose their metadata over OIP image and the discovery interface will be basically working as a single window search uh, system for the entire library system so many of the academic libraries are basically from it so presently uh, you know integration uh, koha with many other software Particular workflows related to Koha integration of that thing with different other software we are using for e learning, for IR, for discovery system, then future. And many So many of the new things are coming which are presently not considered as the part of the library, uh, you know, uh, integrated library system. But you see here, ETD ingestion process, third party authority control, content management system, data mining, grant management, student outcome matrix, all are becoming now it is part of the, you know, uh, typical academic library workflow. Then the predictive analytics, research data management, and LSP will be covering all of this with different kind of apps. Possibly entire Koha code base can be utilized in future but uh, you know the whole scenario is changing towards the LSP. Now with this particular thing, let me uh, you know uh, uh, share with you a network uh, how, uh, how many minutes it will take. So my point is low hanging fruits in Koha in the, in, in, the, in you know in the view of activity considering how Koha can be integrated to the other open content kind of thing like you see for example uh, maps of a library an academic library building uh, I have visited Nehu library it's a big library so many academic libraries are basically multi story you know uh, building with lot many stacks and other things so you see here what we are trying to do 
uh, suppose I am searching in Koha interface uh, with a book. So the moment I click search button here, Now you see the moment I integrate search button here, the book came itself. It took a little bit of time, but here you see in the uh, in the right hand corner of the slide, a stack map also appeared. And if you consider, you know, the display of uh, the item levels here, you see here it is basically based on the item call number. This item call number is actually based on the you know uh, library Congress classification system. Now. If, if my user uh, typically click this particular inloads the full map, so it can automatically show we inside the open where is the particular where is the location of that particular book, and user can easily self guide it to retrieve that particular book. Then this is actually related with the Library of Congress. Now we recently tried and implemented successfully. Uh, this is basically based on. So uh, uh, next, another I am trying to show you that how it can deal with the you know uh, a particular DDC call number also. So I am searching here by another book uh, by a particular term. So here you see this particular book is actually based on the DDC call number. And you see the result here. So what I mean here that uh, Koha gives up uh, gives us enough opportunity, uh, you know, to integrate different kind of uh, code base inside Koha, which will not directly affect the architecture of Koha or the core code base of the Koha, but from the outside or external services, these low hanging fruits we can integrate inside Koha OPAC for better user services. Now here you see. This is actually based on the two copies are available. Copies are available against DDC number. And again, if I click the enlarge full map, this can do. And uh, 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 a few research scholars and students of our department are actually you know, uh, developed all this kind of mapping and other things. I only help them develop the Java required JavaScript to integrate this kind of mappings and other things. Now, this is one of the low hanging fruits which we can uh, make Koha OPEC very rich. Now, the other things uh, what I can uh, tell you, another low hanging fruits uh, which can be integrated inside Koha is the text analysis and open uh, archive resources. For example, this is my another Koha instance where I can search by God. If I search by God, you see what happens. It will retrieve all books related with the God anywhere in the document. And typically, apart from giving you uh, typical OPAC information as normally Koha keeps it also able to identify the copies of the book available in any of the open access or not. So, this is becoming very important for a software of print days that the open contents you are integrating in a particular if you study all kinds. LTR reports generated by Marshall Bidding, Marshall Bidding specially emphasized on this particular aspect of uh, changing scenario in the software development that the now softwares are not available as a you know, uh, you know single standout uh, product. It is now integrating lot of open prints and subscribe resources inside it. Uh, 
And if you consider the last part of this display, here you see it can uh, generate additionally a few tabs which are presently not available in Kohao Pack. We can develop a book reader uh, tab and I'm coming to the text analysis uh, tab. First, uh, let me click the book reader tab. If this particular book and many of the you know books available in academic libraries are already available in in number of uh, you know uh, open access channels, so it can identify the book. It actually found it. Uh, it's available in the open library. And if my user click, they can read it right from here. They don't have to move because of this pandemic situation. This kind of services are very much required for us. And here you see. This is actually integrating the uh, book reader service from the open library. My viewer can uh, you know, um, uh, go forward, come backward. They can search. This particular facility is not available in any of the library or pack. You can search metadata only. But this kind of system, without taking any kind of extra burden, we can integrate that kind of full text search interfaces inside our uh, services. I can search, I can download, I can uh, view, I can read anything. Now, the next step, if you see, this is the actually an external service, uh, text analytics service we have integrated with Koha. It's a very loose integration, but the integration is seamless. If my user click it, the same PDF file, the text analysis services will be appearing here. So it can identify that what are the most frequent uh, you know, uh, words used by this particular author. I can always change the context. Say for example, here now it is around 50. Now I can always change. So uh, you know, this is basically a kind of tag. Cloud, so all kind of statistically, you know, significant, frequently used word by the authors will be coming up. And my user, this is not the end. My user can switch over to any of this particular uh, display format. They can click a summary read of the text. They can go for a different other kind of visualization. For example, how different, uh, you know, statistically significant words are related with each other. If my user click links. So it will create all the statistically significant links between the all statistically significant words, and always I can increase in uh, context like the previous example. So here you see I increase the context. Now it will generate dynamically. So around this one, if I place a particular mouse pointer here, so it can automatically indicate, indicate different kind of other. So. Many other you know uh, services, uh, similar kind of visualization services, text analytic services. We can integrate. So, for example, uh, you know, bubble generation. So, if I click uh, bubble generation, so it can automatically generate statistically uh, significant words and what are basically the most of the words, how many words are there, and how many of these are statistically significant. Or so. so, apart from the metadata of the bins from a library. We can now also provide the text of the document alongside different kind of additional information services analytics. So kind of analytics text analysis can help really the language very much. So um, for some, uh, these are low hangs anyone can implement through a, a little bit of thing. And I, you know, uh, thankful to uh, because integration text, text part we got how many different repeatable uh, fields these are all based on the uh, tag 8 subject view so if any number uh, you know values for the uh, repeated occurrence for the uh, tag uh, 856 how to handle it so please help us and now i am going to little bit harder part so this you can see this is basically our e-learning portal now here as Alex said uh, rightly that Koha REST API is actually holds the true for integration with the other many software. So model we are using here and Koha came up with in the with the version 20.045 with many of the REST endpoints. So the, those REST endpoints we, uh, we have utilized. Now you see my user can enter inside uh, my e-learning system by using the credentials given uh, by, by them uh, by the Koha software. So if they click here, so it will uh, contact organization token you know kind of rest endpoints 
authenticity and will let them enter inside the learning system so now suppose inside the learning system when i uh, uh, go there so here lies again the role of interoperability for example nowadays you see uh, people are saying libraries need to follow the uh, you know uh, push model so library need to push them to the uh, work you know academic workflow that is the teaching learn evaluation workflow so here you see the presence of arch inside uh, the model here we are using html but i always prefer to use the lti service alex uh, uh, previously worked out uh, you know with koha and model integration lti kind of services so kind of services may help uh, say for example m such books uh, available in my book written gathi so immediately can uh, go to the koha it can negotiate content and within the same interface it can generate these are the books available and suppose these are books available i can check any of this it works on most other thing and that particular book will be you know available it will check so for example i am uh, uh, you know uh, going for the very famous book of uh, mahatma gandhi that my experiment with truth and here you see here my user can have all kind of opac information alongside uh, you know book reader just i uh, displayed here text analytics and again geo spatial Uh, you know uh, search system now geospatial search system is what so if the if this particular book uh, deals with any number of you know uh, places so it can automatically check the play names and can do that uh, in graphically that from where the movement or you know different kind of discussion related to space from which place uh, gandhi ji moved uh, to which place all you can see here inside your opac dynamically so this kind of text analysis service geo spatial information system can very easily integrated with the koha uh, with e learning it with koha itself and koha itself can be integrated with the e learning system in future because that is the demand of the time and uh, presently we are using a very simple kind of methodology html blocking but uh, alex uh, you know uh, uh, did a lot many you know did lot many works related with different kind of you know lti learning tools interoperability and the last one what i want to show you that uh, in case of suppose uh, in case of uh, academic library multi site based you know uh, academic libraries for example new or two three campuses we are having two three campuses so many of the universities are having two three campuses koha itself does not provide any kind of opportunity for developing an union catalog you can tell me that any number of libraries we can uh, manage inside a single koha instances but please remember if we are having a kind of union catalog for all universities all colleges in india then any library is not a branch of the other library so there we need a you know discovery system to prepare union catalog and here you see the interoperability standard support by koha like ilsdi rest tpi what it can do for us so here for uh, for presently for you know uh, in instances i am using here my user can search all four libraries right from here they can browse the collection of all libraries directly and suppose i am going for uh, uh, browsing all kind of library one now so it can right from here it can contour or negotiate it can generate the time availability of the item level status now suppose i am uh, select this particular now the details of the book uh, will come alongside details of the quiz and right from here i can log inside uh, uh, in my discovery system by using koha credential through a protocol called ilsdi presently we are trying to do it with the koha rest api based because koha sumai group came up with a uh, very interesting plugin called koha rest api that we are uh, trying to utilize but meanwhile i am showing you the right from here i can have place a hold i can check my files i can uh, you know check my browsing you know uh, browsing history everything so all the local uh, you know open functionalities we can integrate inside uh, you know uh, single window search interfaces and because of the interoperability system supported by koha and there lies the uh, you know importance of interoperability support by koha in future so right from here i can select i am a user of a library one 
now i can give my uh, login and password here i hope i will remember the password because every time i forget now you see the moment i click login so it is actually trying here you see in the right hand corner it is actually trying to uh, negotiate my back end koha instances if my authenticity is okay then it will allow me to place a hold now here you see i can place a hold i can write a comment i can uh, select my library so i am presently you know cancelling it now here you see i am just trying to point out the importance of this kind of interoperability systems in future right from here in my single user window interface all kind of opac functionalities can be generated if i click my your account here so now again it is connecting my koha from the back end it is fetching all related information like checked out item loan history holds fines profile etc and uh, when it will establish the connection my user can have everything they can change change password they can do anything with this now if i click the profile button profile button here here you see it is again actually trying to fetch all information from koha so right from here all information available in koha is uh, presently available i can change my password i can place a hold i can calculate you know check my fines and many so this is actually uh, you know uh, my point of uh, uh, reference and uh, i am extremely sorry uh, that uh, you know some kind of uh, technical glitches happen uh, because i i already i told uh, ravi that this is going to happen with me because i am you know in a network uh, poverty zone presently uh, so hibernating in a remote corner of bengal so thank you very much i hope you got the essence what i uh, actually talked yes sir yes sir thank you thank you very much for the informative session sir thank you sir uh, so uh, now sir has given us an overview or how we can integrate many stand alone uh, softwares with koha so we from our side also have done it but we will not go into this part now so now i will ask uh, dr sumer to come out with a working librarian sir angel how koha is enabling him for a better uh, service provider in library and what kind of uh, new expectation Uh, library professions are having. I, I I want to hear from Sir uh, Sumer from the library perspective, from a uh, working librarian. Sir, it's up next to you, Sir. Yeah, Sumer, Sir. <coughs> uh, uh, good uh, evening uh, and good afternoon to uh, my dear colleagues uh, uh, who are part of this uh, uh, webinar. Uh, I'm grateful to uh, the Vice Chancellor of uh, Northeastern University, uh, Professor Srivastava, for uh, gracing the occasion as chief guest. It was an encouragement for all of us, OHA enthusiasts. I'm uh, thankful to uh, Dr. Vicky Kalalu uh, for opening the session. Uh, of course, to uh, Dr. Ravi too for uh, taking. Uh, the initiative for bringing us all together uh, to this uh, platform. Of course, not to forget uh, uh, Professor Panda, Dean School of uh, Economics and Information Science, uh, for uh, uh, his words of encouragement and to be with us at the start of uh, the session. Uh, Uh, greetings uh, goes to all my dear colleagues, uh, uh, Professor uh, Partha Sarathi, uh, Dr. Sujinta, of course, my friend from overseas, uh, Jessica and Alex, who uh, spoke at length about uh, uh, Koha. Uh, now, uh, the theme of this uh, uh, webinar uh, focus on acceptance and expectation. Now, as a working librarian, uh, facts and figures says that uh, the world wide uh, web have played a vital role to ensure that uh, for 20 years now, uh, Koha is uh, being established as one of the leading uh, integrated library management software uh, across the globe. 
and in fact it's getting stronger as uh, uh, Alex uh, had uh, uh, spoken earlier started way back uh, uh, in uh, January of 2000 and uh, statistics all over the world talks about uh, academic public and special libraries adopting Koha uh, for which uh, it may be uh, more than the 6,000, 7,000 uh, libraries. Now, uh, acceptance, uh, according to me as a working librarian, is because uh, of uh, the domination of uh, the World Wide Web in uh, library management and uh, services. And of course, uh, Koha provides uh, the, the uh, standard online public access catalog, which is the window uh, to the resources that are housed in the uh, physical or in the digital uh, library space. Uh, another uh, uh, a feature which uh, uh, Koha stands very strongly uh, on is uh, because of its standards, the Mark 21 standards for which uh, it, it simply permits uh, interoperability of systems and uh, it's because of this as uh, Dr. Parati, Parati have uh, cited uh, uh, a few minutes back. We are looking forward uh, to see Koha interacting now uh, with uh, these modern systems, web-based systems for which uh, libraries now are being introduced to, be it in the field of uh, e-learning, be it in the field of uh, uh, online content, content management. Uh, we do hope uh, that uh, uh, Koha and uh, with the community support uh, and a uh, large group of enthu uh, enthusiastic uh, Koha users and uh, developers, I'm sure that uh, Koha will definitely be uh, uh, a platform whereby it's a standard for dissemination of information by libraries, information centers, and perhaps integrate into the learning e-learning uh, environment. Uh, I, I, I look upon, uh, look upon the Koha uh, as uh, uh, a software which uh, have uh, exhibit this uh, uh, stability in terms of uh, performance, in, in, in terms of system uh, that supports its uh, functioning. And uh, it's because of these uh, perhaps uh, we can uh, uh, say that uh, the users have uh, uh, started to accept uh, Goha uh, in a big uh, way. The manner in which uh, uh, information is being uh, stored in uh, Goha, the manner or the format in, in which information is being uh, displayed uh, along with the quality that uh, uh, it gives to the, to the, to the users. It uh, uh, gives a lot of satisfaction uh, to uh, the patrons and library users. And uh, the level of uh, user confidence uh, uh, gets raised with uh, time as uh, we keep on moving from one version to another. Now, acceptance uh, of Koha have been the proof uh, uh, for uh, a very long time when it started uh, in the India since uh, uh, the year 2000 when it was launched uh, in New Zealand. And uh, uh, we have evidence uh, that uh, it has picked up uh, uh, its first installation, perhaps uh, in, the, in the, the state of Kerala, where uh, literature says that uh, Saint Joseph College, Devagiri, Indian Indian state of Kerala, have uh, deployed it, perhaps for the first time. This is uh, you know information that I got from one of uh, the publications from uh, one of uh, 
co-authored uh, by one of the panelists uh, uh, in this webinar, uh, uh, Dr. Vimal, who will be speaking uh, later. And of course, we could see that uh, it had picked up uh, thereafter uh, because of uh, its popularity, where uh, uh, the Delhi Public Library started to adopt Koha, and uh, uh, Delhi Public Library is a prestigious library system uh, with assistance of UNESCO, set up by the government of India way back in 1951. And uh, it's a huge uh, library system uh, when uh, referring to uh, public uh, libraries, where it has over uh, 2 million books, more than the 30 uh, physical libraries located in various parts of Delhi. And it serves uh, nearly a lakh uh, users. And there's a huge transaction of, uh, of books that are being uh, uh, handled uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, touching to around uh, 50,000 or so uh, uh, circulation uh, that is happening. Now, uh, that is one of the, uh, a big example of uh, you know, acceptance of, uh, of this software in a country where you have uh, public library systems uh, uh, coming together and using a single platform well, because of its uh, features, because of its standards. Uh, we uh, here in our country are able to see that uh, a group of libraries are coming together in one platform for the benefit of its users and uh, for the benefit of uh, the public at large. And uh, following it, there are uh, major uh, uh, acceptance, uh, which prove acceptance of Koha in the form of projects. Uh, one of them is the Grand Halaya uh, project uh, uh, that uh, again uh, established union catalogs of public libraries uh, in the Konkan region of Maharashtra. Then uh, following it, you have universities who have uh, accepted Koha uh, and uh, made it functional in the year 2009. Uh, the state of Tamil Nadu uh, have uh, accepted Koha in the, their district the libraries and uh, adoption of Koha in the public library systems. And, uh, uh, a university in Tamil Nadu, Anna University under the uh, AUKBC Research uh, Center. Uh, there was a project, National Resource Center for Free Open Source uh, Software, where uh, it was funded by the Department of Information Technology the Government of India. Uh, they uh, accepted OHA and implemented it uh, at the center. And, uh, we also have uh, the Anna Center, Centenary Library, which selected Koha uh, as uh, its uh, platform uh, for its automation uh, uh, purposes. Uh, I recall uh, Mysore University, which successfully migrated to Koha from its earlier uh, established systems way back in 2010 under the leadership of Dr. Bodhar, who was a visiting professor from library advisor where they grouped together 58 libraries, uh, which includes uh, the central libraries, five colleges, 13 institutions, and uh, more than 36 departments with uh, over 1 million reports uh, integrated and uh, integrated and uh, you know reflected in their Koha uh, uh, database. Uh, we've also had uh, acceptance uh, uh, from uh, the British Council of Libraries here in India and Sri Lanka, where uh, by uh, around uh, 1,000, uh, in fact, 1 lakh 20,000 numbers of uh, around 10 libraries belonging to the British Council uh, were integrated together, together using the Koha uh, software. And uh, it had been the uh, highly beneficial, not only to the British uh, Council Libraries, uh, but to its patrons uh, across 
uh, in which uh, it was a landmark uh, decision and uh, its implementation in fact uh, had uh, thrown in some light to be replicated across uh, 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 similar institutions and universities uh, worldwide. Uh, the uh, other instances of uh, POHA acceptance uh, in the country and uh, I uh, should uh, take pride uh, uh, in the mentioning uh, the uh, adoption of POHA by Northeastern Delhi University when uh, we migrated uh, from uh, POHA uh, uh, when we migrated to Koha from our uh, legacy system, uh, Nexus 4, way back in 2012, when uh, we uh, got uh, 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 good response and support from our uh, administrative uh, uh, department under the uh, able leadership of uh, uh, Professor uh, Ramo Tandon as the Vice Chancellor, and I recall uh, uh, Professor Lathan uh, Tuanga uh, as uh, the Pro Vice Chancellor. When the, this project was approved for the library, and uh, it was uh, uh, an opening uh, for uh, Nehu and its users to have uh, Goha on board through the RFID. Uh, project. Uh, it was a successful uh, uh, migration where we had uh, the uh, records of books uh, and journals uh, approximately to around 1.5 lakhs when we migrated and uh, presently all of it is available on the, the Koha platform. Uh, initially there were uh, a uh, great uh, difficulty during the migration because uh, uh, way back in 2012 there were uh, very less uh, resources uh, uh, to support uh, the migration. There were less resources uh, uh, on the World Wide Web uh, related with uh, uh, migration of uh, of, uh, of uh, legacy uh, systems, uh, especially like Lipsys. Uh, which is a very close and proprietary system to uh, an open uh, uh, system like Koha. And uh, through the project, uh, we took uh, the assistance of, uh, of OSS labs at that point of time. And uh, there were uh, lots of uh, uh, ideas that are being shared uh, between uh, Nehu uh, library and uh, OSS uh, labs uh, implemented implementation OHA implementation group and uh, we were able to do it uh, in order to have the database uh, uh, ready uh, so that uh, we could go uh, uh, live and we successfully uh, was able to do it uh, uh, specifically I recall uh, during the, the month of March uh, in the year 2012. And there were lots of capacity building that was required uh, 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 when the, we uh, adopted the new systems because uh, you, uh, it's become, uh, it has become a great challenge when the, we have uh, an existing system and uh, the, the, the workforce, the su support staff uh, uh, were acquainted uh, with, uh, with, with a system where it has specific uh, workflows, where it has become the norm, where it has become uh, sort of the standard. And I recall uh, uh, that was uh, also uh, the type of uh, information that was being taught in the, the library and science uh, curriculum. And uh, it had got an influence, uh, you know, in the teaching. Uh, of uh, of uh, information retri uh, retrieval uh, systems with, uh, with, uh, with a focus on the, on the libraries uh, softwares at, at at that point of time. So it was a it was a challenging uh, time for the library because each and every individual needs to focus now uh, to uh, to 
totally different uh, uh, new uh, platform where uh, uh, suddenly uh, you know you don't have serial uh, management you don't have financial management in serials where you have the acquisition uh, module integrated uh, with, uh, with uh, the, the procedures required for acquisition of uh, serials where you suddenly have uh, you know your fields as mark fields uh, and uh, but what was uh, uh, exciting was to see uh, the OPAC, you know, the window uh, to our patrons, uh, which was uh, always there, available uh, 24 by 7 because of, uh, you know, uh, the, the standards that uh, it supports uh, uh, through um, the protocols uh, of the world. world, world. So, uh, uh, we we had to uh, uh, as as uh, as a librarian, uh, uh, you know, uh, so to say, uh, looking after uh, uh, this entire setup. Uh, we need to bring back, uh, you know, uh, uh, the focus of our manpower, uh, refocus them, uh, so that you know the working procedures uh, are being done as per the workflow that. Um, uh, that uh, has been specified uh, uh, by Koha. It was uh, it was uh, it was a satisfying. Uh, it was challenging, but it was a satisfying decision, and it was a long journey. And we are here now in 2020, for which uh, you know we are looking forward uh, of the new features, as Alex has uh, mentioned earlier, uh, that uh, we will be uh, you know. Uh, using and uh, delivering it uh, as services to our patrons uh, when we move to uh, the 20.05 and uh, subsequently 20.11 version. Uh, we we uh, like to inform here uh, through uh, this webinar and I think this opportunity that uh, we've also had uh, you know, a series of training programs, uh, uh, not only in Nehu, uh, but we've also had uh, training programs in the other colleges uh, affiliated to Nehu. We've gone beyond, uh, uh, you know, Nehu in other parts uh, of uh, of uh, the Northeast uh, uh, to 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 you know spread uh, uh, the uh, the importance and uh, the the value that Koha can give to uh, libraries, uh, especially academic libraries that are located in each and every state here in uh, northeastern India. Uh, I recall Alex when he mentioned uh, Christopher Cormack. Uh, I I I am privileged uh, to uh, to uh, tell the viewers here that uh, Chris Cormack had visited Nehu as a chief resource person in one of uh, uh, a two-day advanced level workshop for the implementation of Koha, which was uh, held here in Nehu on the February 24th and 25th in the year 2017, uh, for which uh, uh, it was done in collaboration with Informatics uh, Global Private Limited uh, uh, Bangalore, and uh, it was a privilege to have uh, uh, Christopher Cormack, uh, whereby uh, those who attended the program, of course, it was a physical uh, physical uh, conference where we had uh, participants from uh, across uh, the northeast and uh, a few participants from across uh, the country too coming together in Nehu. Uh, to see Christopher Cormack uh, open up uh, the Koha system in front of our eyes and uh, to tinker with the code and uh, show us the possibility of what uh, Koha can do, especially to librarians uh, being uh, you know, a free and open source uh, system, for which uh, it was just unbelievable. And, uh, uh, in fact, uh, it had created a big impact uh, to those uh, 
uh, libraries who attended uh, that uh, program. Now, uh, the uh, level of acceptance uh, have really grown uh, uh, till date uh, in the, this part of the country where uh, I would like to cite uh, in, the, in the course of uh, last uh, couple of years uh, with, uh, with the support of uh, uh, Documentation Research and Training Center. Uh, uh, hello? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Can I go? Sir, go ahead. Sir, can you manage the time, sir? We are running out of time, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, we had uh, managed to, uh, uh, with the support of ERTC, uh, uh, Bangalore, and the uh, Indian Statistical Institute, uh, Kolkata, we are able to take Koha uh, to the other states in the Northeast, in order to create that awareness and to uh, ensure that uh, uh, the skills of uh, working in the Goha uh, is uh, is spread out uh, throughout uh, the uh, uh, region. Uh, as far as uh, the uh, expectations is uh, concerned, as uh, as a working librarian. Uh, since it has become one of the most popular integrated library system now and being an open system with a vibrant uh, community, definitely there will be lots of questions uh, uh, that will be thrown back to the community. Uh, there will be lots of ideas that, uh, uh, you know, there will be exchange and uh, of course there will be demands as the time goes on uh, related with uh, the uh, relevance of Koha as we move into uh, you know the e-learning uh, platform as we move into discovery services and uh, of course uh, the the there will be lots of questions uh, uh, that will be asked on the, uh, how acquisition could be made more simpler uh, how serial management could be made uh, more attractive uh, uh, more accepted uh, uh, by uh, by the librarians and I'm sure uh, as somebody who spent uh, lots of years uh, in Koha, uh, I believe that uh, you know, every user, not only a, a library or librarian, every user would like to have a system which is you know, user friendly uh, and uh, which would be uh, you know, an instant attraction to, uh, to, uh, to uh, those who, uh, who, who you know, anticipate or uh, who feel that they would adopt it for their, uh, you know, uh, libraries. Uh, it, uh, I expect that uh, uh, through this platform, developers who are across the globe uh, perhaps needs to focus on, uh, on, on, uh, on these two modules, uh, you know, because we are seeing lots of development on the OPAC, OPAC site. We're seeing lots of, uh, you know, new features to support the circulation, to support the patrons. To support cataloging, uh, but uh, I I feel uh, you know as a working librarian that there needs to be a focus on acquisition and serials management so that it could be made uh, much more simpler. Uh, you know, generation of orders, for example, in acquisition uh, could be made uh, more simpler. Uh, its customization for the requirement of uh, the library could be uh, uh, could be introduced. Uh, you know, import. Uh, of uh, of uh, titles to be ordered so that there's a quick acquisition that could be completed, uh, you know, in the, in the, in short span of time, and of course, uh, you know, simplification of uh, the serial management, and of course, uh, financial management in terms of periodicals, which we do look forward uh, in the, the uh, upcoming uh, versions. Uh, we we do hope uh, that. Uh, we will also see uh, uh, more of uh, more of uh, you know options to ensure that patrons are able to make payments of uh, their late fee or fines uh, uh, directly into uh, you know directly into uh, a payment gateway. Because uh, as 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 a library uh, which is uh, you know which serves uh, 
uh, a central university as huge as Northeastern Hill University, where there are norms which uh, you know, to, to be to comply with uh, as per government of India, uh, financial rules and regulations. Uh, we 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 look forward so that uh, you know uh, when a patron uh, uh, clicks on the a payment of a late fee or fines, perhaps it, there should be a feature where uh, institutes could uh, could uh, customize and integrate their payment uh, their preferred payment uh, gateway portals so that you know, the payment could be done uh, you know in a procedure in a procedure as. Uh, 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 as required or as uh, desired, we do look forward uh, to uh, uh, to uh, to uh, though analytics is available, but uh, for a university library, we do look forward for uh, you know feature like article indexing, which has become uh, uh, popular, uh, which has been popular lately, but still there's a need for it. Uh, sir, you know? Sorry to interrupt, sir. Other so, panelists are waiting, sir. System. Sorry to interrupt. So, uh, I, 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 I conclude uh, uh, this uh, this uh, session uh, uh, by uh, uh, putting in a small suggestions, as uh, Professor Partha Sarati had said. We do look forward also for uh, you know features of analytics because there are a lot of data available in Koha. We have a patron, we have the usage statistics, we have books and journals. These needs to be analyzed, you know, so that we can uh, we can create a prediction pattern, understand the patrons. Uh, personalize, you know, the services, and of course, uh, you know, build Doha uh, to ensure that it is ready and uh, uh, integrates uh, and become relevant uh, uh, in this uh, present uh, uh, junction. Uh, with this, uh, with this presentation, I, I, I thank the organizers and uh, uh, I hand it over the session to the board. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, without taking uh, time, because already two of the panelists are waiting for their other engagements, so I request uh, Ma'am Sunita's uh, view on, on the same topic and next to Vimal. Uh, I request all of you to stick on to the time, because already other <laughs> timely. Thank you, ma thank you. Yeah, uh, first of all, yes, uh, good evening, good afternoon, uh, and good morning uh, to Jessica and Alex and other uh, plan, uh, panelists here. Uh, I, uh, I know that we are already running short of time and it's already extended almost about three hours and it's been a bit uh, uh, uncomfortable to sit continuously for three hours, especially I'm watching Alex and Jessica. We In between, we could switch off our cameras and we could uh, take some uh, break, but uh, I really would stick with my timing. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Vice Chancellor, uh, Dr. Srivatsava, then Ravi Kumar and uh, Dr. Panda and Jessica and Alex and other my pa uh, panelist members for joining for this uh, evening. Uh, as a library professional, I have been, uh, uh, as a practitioner of Koha, I uh, teach, uh, conduct Koha workshops and been involved in using Koha for over last more than almost 10 years. Uh, and uh, as, as a, uh, 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 when I was, uh, I was asked to give an opinion about what new features I am expecting as a, a practitioner from Koha. And since Alex is here and Jessica is representing as a Bywaters uh, member, I thought I would give some inputs from my side, which I look up uh, for look uh, as a librarian point of view, uh, and then uh, would see that in few uh, next releases of Koha, there would be uh, those things would be uh, uh, taken into consideration. Of course, these are my suggestions, and I'm uh, consider uh, I'm trying to mention them as a librarian. Uh, so I'll just try to share my screen. Uh, 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 so I just, uh, uh, am I, uh, my screen is visible? Uh, yeah. Uh, if not, I'm not audible, please let me know if I'm not audible. Is my screen visible? 
yes yes sir okay thank you uh, uh, so uh, i'll just quickly go uh, f- very uh, i'll go a little fast uh, yes as we know that india has large number of uh, libraries are using koha and many cal- uh, catalogs are already available on internet and some are available on intranet and we know that more than 15000 libraries are already using koha and i re- we really thank koha developers across the world for making such a wonderful software available to the world and which has helped many libraries to move out of from the commercial software that's very important point uh, and where i work at csr ncl we have implemented koha with rfid integration uh, through the support from one of the dae laboratory vcc and i really thank them for giving us all the support uh, we really uh, did not pay anything to any vendor and we intern uh, we had managed to uh, completely move our catalog from uh, commercial software to koha open source during 2016 and still as on today it's functioning quite well uh, when i just thought about when uh, dr ravi kumar had mentioned that that madam you have to uh, give an opinion about what you expect uh, from the library community so that the developers would have some idea uh, like uh, when moving on to uh, uh, new versions of the koha and as a library professional and helping many libraries especially i try to help the local librarians who do not have any uh, kind of uh, back end technology support and they are the only librarian in the country and uh, in their in institute and they want to implement koha uh, uh, from that point of view i just thought of making some suggestions uh, many professionals as i have mentioned uh, they are not very technically confident uh, and there is always a concern to a librarian that it's the installation is a bit difficult task uh, and that the platform dependency makes one of the important challenge the librarian face uh, because it works on ubuntu operating system so that's one of the challenge many uh, com- my professional colleagues have been talking about uh, so it would help libraries if an interactive installation script would be available to install koha probably there are some efforts but kind of uh, as an uh, if this is made available people would really be easily install it if they do not have technological background support in their organization uh, many libraries it also has been happening that libraries do uh, uh, have in a dilemma whether to install it locally or to go for the cloud server and uh, uh, there are a lot of technical issues which the, many of them really have a uh, trouble about uh, so some kind kind of guidance would really help library community uh, and then uh, la- there are large libraries which really need to migrate their data though there are many people who are working across the world but kind of easy tools which help the librarians to co- convert their bibliographic data or circulation records or any other data they have which can easily for help them to migrate to koha that would be a really great help i'm just trying to give the suggestions uh, as what uh, could easily make more installations of koha because I, i have seen many library professionals around me uh, and they are trying to tell me that we cannot move because of these 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 issues that we have uh, of course there are many live dvds which are created uh, i have worked with professor ard prasad we have one live dvd uh, vimal has also released a live dvd still libraries uh, have a big question that how to install the operating system how to install the koha how to do the data migration and then working about uh, uh, various modules on koha so these are some of the things which i felt from as a individual professional point of view uh, when we are talking about back end technology we have realized that uh, every few fortnightly the new version of koha would be released and it would be kind of a challenging job for a librarian to uh, continuously keeping it upgraded uh, the versions of koha so if there is a kind of alpha beta release candidate uh, kind of approach it would really be uh, uh, easy for the librarians to upgrade koha without i mean every fortnightly or every uh, new version when it comes out to be uh, and then we were trying to when we uh, recently we have been working with uh, uh, we are getting koha uh, integrated with uh, nginx and we found it a bit uh, difficult to get it work with uh, because it koha basically supports a apache as a web browser so uh, if that on that part uh, if something is done uh, it would also be good if postgres as a backend would be supported uh, when the number of records are going to be increased in future uh, uh, one thing which i have found many times about the admin login many times the librarian do try to go uh, ahead and do uh, that onboarding tool uh, 
uh, set up and then the librarian himself forget about the login and password and then it really becomes difficult for that librarian to understand how to retrieve that so with the browser or somewhere if there is an easy way a librarian can retrieve the super librarian password that would be kind of an easy support which can really help the library community uh, another point which i realize many libraries when they are implementing koha they do not follow actually they need training material they do not attend any workshops they just install and start using it uh, by doing that many times they miss out uh, global system preferences setup uh, so when there is a web uh, on the web installation done there should be some kind of pop up window should come out and tell the library that yes you should do the global system preferences and then start using koha otherwise many libraries do not make an attempt to mix uh, uh, their configuration like uh, mark org code or bar code or how do they want to create item how to set up the authority and small small things they really get into trouble and they uh, they really uh, have a lot of mess in their own koha work, uh, working uh, environment so they if they uh, the developers make out some pop up window kind of thing it would really help them to understand that how they have to move ahead with using koha uh, the way right now the barcode generators which are uh, mentioned just branch code and the number would also be an easy approach if there are multi branch libraries been managed uh, in the koha uh, installation uh, i i thought about acquisition these are all suggestions which i have been i have as an individual librarian i have felt i wanted to men mention them in my presentation when i am adding an item uh, that the small button is hidden at the bottom of the page and then many times again i have observed my, when i am conducting the sessions librarians forget about it and they do not add when i am adding a new book in my library and placing an order and trying to acquire the book so uh, the, there should be again a pop up window that uh, need to say that add item and then you can save kind of option should be uh, prominently visible that's what i wanted to give a suggestion from that point of view uh, in the serials dr sumer has already mentioned that the serial modules it, uh, i mean probably developers are already aware about it but uh, in uh, 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 the module with the serials only should have a, like adding a record ordering serial maintaining print electronic access maintaining consortia details maintaining license agreement and binding uh, sending the uh, print issues for binding and maintaining both print and electronic subscription kind would be like these uh, kind of features people are looking at from the indian library community especially uh, or probably across the world people are looking at and when we are talking about other features uh, people are expecting that that indic collection google transliteration is really again a, a required feature by many of my i mean uh, um, uh, i i have got this feedback from dr uh, sandeep bhausar as well as my uh, 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 professor ard prasad from drtc some of the features he has uh, mentioned that you uh, i should mention to the developing community koha uh, rfid front end support is also expected by the people uh, dr parth sarthi has already mentioned about integrating with uh, who find and uh, other open access content as well as analytical support uh, small videos uh, in uh, uh with koha admin page also would really be helpful if uh, i mean to start as an a librarian who is a very fresh librarian and he wants to really work with koha uh, in built uh, koha small videos on different modules will really help them uh, not more than 4 minutes kind of uh, videos would really help them to start up uh, using koha different modules with a proper workflow uh, kind of uh, I, and i am really thankful to bywaters they have really created very good videos and other videos are also available on internet and more easy data backup and restore support is again uh, one of the thing which i thought because many libraries they lose their data they are using koha but they do not maintain it and then you know it comes to a situation that they have not maintained the backups properly training support uh, that is one of the concern which as an individual library professional i have been thinking that there are a lot of vendors which are across india available uh, but uh, what happens is when i approach one of the vendor uh, the it is it kind of becomes a lock to the librarian and then you know the expectations from the vendors uh, goes on and then it becomes a kind of really another commercial uh, support uh, cycle so i think we need to work on the vendor support more uh, of course lis school need 
to create more classes on koha and uh, i felt from indian perspective point of view there are a lot of india engineering student that are around in india and they can really we can really motivate them to contribute for the more koha uh, patches development uh, and uh, as in from an indian contribution we could uh, do more development in koha which will help eventually to the whole world uh, so uh, and lot of large work needs to be done with the data standardization and consistency in data uh, there are a lot of installations with koha but again uh, we are still lacking with these features but of course yes we have seen that uh, many uh, institutes are uh, implementing koha and now in across india if you see that the libraries are uh, only using koha and they are trying to move away from commercial software which is available in the libraries and slowly uh, many libraries would certainly come out with the koha installations uh, and one of the thing which i felt that yes we need to more concentrate on the school libraries and the public libraries where uh, still they lack availability of technology as well as expertise and we have to see that how easily uh, it can be uh, i mean what way we can help the community out to bring the catalogs from school libraries and uh, 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 college libraries where remotely these libraries really do not have more advanced technologies neither they have internet connection so with this those constraints how we can move out and help those libraries that's one of the thing which i felt uh, and they, i i thought very fast uh, uh, and i thank uh, dr sandeep bhausar and dr professor riyadi prasad for giving the inputs uh, that's what i from my side i wanted to be very fast thank you very much thank you very much for ma'am for being very brief and crisp ma'am thank you thank you thank you for sticking on to the time thank you very yeah. much uh, yeah thank you now i call upon uh, dr vimal for his views vimal yeah yes sir i am here yeah. good evening yeah. all i will brief my uh, share my thoughts within few minutes anyway <laughs> um uh, india is a very different country compared with other um, other countries uh, in case of library automation Uh, it is a very tough terrain to implement something new. It will take uh, too many years to manifest. Anyway, uh, Koha Koha could uh, to make its uh, made its footprint in India within few years. But its features and the functions very suitable for Indian libraries, especially handling with the multi languages. India has a lot of regional languages. Koha can handle it very beautifully. Uh, anyway, uh, Koha is an ideal software uh, to achieve one India, one library software. Anyway, I will share. Uh, Training in 2005, and the library process. Fly beside.
ICT infrastructure with the central government and state governments, they have to open up their data centers for Koha implementation. They can provide ready to use Koha instances for libraries. They can use it uh, without any technical problems. Uh, they do not. Uh, Libraries, uh, sorry, university libraries are uh, good with uh, technical manpower and other facilities. They can uh, establish some training facilities in in the university in university libraries. Uh, give us some support for libraries in, in that area. In this way, we can uh, we can provide co uh, in this way all libraries in in India can implement Koha and uh, uh, they can reduce their total cost. Ownership. These are my suggestions. In Kerala, Koha implement uh, every library impl implemented very successfully, and uh, we have uh, some uh, initiative already started to host all Koha uh, in, in, in installations into cloud in state government, uh, especially both academic and public libraries. Uh, not completed yet. Anyway, uh, it's going on. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vimal, uh, for uh, briefly concluding. Uh, because we are running out of time, I, I request permission from the panelists whether we have time for taking a few questions. Because a lot of questions are popping up, whether we have the time, at least few questions we can take. Uh, if all of you agree, we will proceed further, otherwise we will wind up. Yes, at least a few questions we need, we need to take. <laughs> <laughs> no, because already ma'am Jessica has warned me she's she's on the way for <laughs> and Sunita ma'am also. So I want. Uh, uh, okay, then uh, I think five questions will be okay. We can take five questions. Sir. Uh, okay, sir. Okay, then we will move for the question and answer section. We will see what are the questions and for whom it has been. Uh, targeted. Uh, now we will move to uh, Q and A. Okay, so one question from the participants. It's audible. Ah, uh, yes, sir. yes. It's for Alex and uh, Jessica. Uh, the thing is that uh, so folio is coming in big way. So, what will be the future of Koha in that case? Um, I can say we are working with libraries in the folio community as well, and. You know, it just gives users another opportunity for an open source product. Koha is very mature. And Mute, accept the speaker. Yes. Please mute. Please mute the. Here, there we go. I think that. that yeah, yeah, ma'am. Jessica, you can proceed. Okay. And any any type of library can use Koha, whether it's a public or academic or special library, and Koha will always be a major contender as an open source platform. I think the introduction of Folio just gives users another option for 
you know, a different type of open source platform. Yes, I agree with Jessica. I think that Folio is a really good open source addition to the library environment and that it's it's a good companion with Koha. Um, I'm not as familiar with Folio as Jessica might be because I know Bywater's done quite a lot of work with Folio, but um, I, I think it will be a really good open source addition. Okay, I think uh, this will help our audience to get a clarity on whether the Koha will survive after the portfolio comes into the picture. So now we will move on to the next question. Uh, the question is, in emerging world of microservice, is Koha open to it or it will stick on to its monolithic architecture only for future development? It's for Alex. So that's one, that's one that I probably want to check. So I haven't heard a lot about micro um, microsystems in the Koha context. Um, what I'd encourage that person, the participant that submitted that, is if they could email me that, um, and I'm happy to get back with them, back to them with an answer. So. If you can't remember my email address, it was Alex Buckley. Yeah, yeah, that that's not issue. We will we will forward it for a perfect. Better, uh, uh, we will move to the next question. Uh, uh, compatibility with FRBR, uh, the functional requirement of bibliographic record with Koha. Uh, in current context, to what extent it is feasible? Is the question audible? um is it frbr yeah, is that the what compatibility with frbr yep. uh, with Koha. I, know, uh. I know there is an active bug in the community i'm not sure what the number is off the top of my head but i can find it but i know the community is talking about uh ferberization for the koha opac hmm. i'll see if i can find the bug okay okay yeah uh, another another question is on the screen Sir, uh, which is the best software for Koha LMS or Sol? Many Northeast Indian recommend Sol. It is supporting open label software. We have walk, manifestation and item. Both full level. All full levels are support. Real the challenge will be the for the relationship. So, for example, one particular book related to a particular cover page, that cover page is illustrated by someone else. So, how this complex you know, information scenario or the bibliographic relationship could be achieved? That will be the challenge, but basic FRBR level, we are already supporting work, expression, manifestation, and item. When you are uh, cataloging a particular book, you are basically cataloging the manifestation. And when you are providing item details, you are uh, you know descri uh, describing a particular item. So in that level, you know, uh, FRBR, FRBRized, you know, OPAC or FRBRized edition, if you open up in Koha Global System Pref, so it, it can help you. But real challenge, as I said, the bibliographic relationship and visualizing the bibliographic relationship inside Koha, possibly in a, a, as a separate tab, tab in Koha. Uh, yeah, sir. One more question is on the screen. I think Partha, sir, you can address it. The best software for Koha LMS or Sol, many Northeast Indians are recommending Sol. Which there, there is no comparison between Koha and Sol. Sol is a you know substandard ILS uh, uh, what uh, in uh, in my point of view because you see lot many global standard nowadays you know software is not that important the important is how many global standard open standards you are supporting to achieve interoperability and none of the global standards you know uh, so far fully supported by Sol Sol even not fully Mark 21 compatible if you go for different kind of export import between Koha and Mark uh, Sol you will understand the, this particular feature have you seen the z39.50 client interface of koha host to the power infinity they are not learning anything from the koha community group so do not go for any kind of commercial software available in india always go for the best in the business open source software called koha okay 
that is why you know i may you know uh, appear as ru uh, slightly rude in this particular factor but always this is the, this is actually coming from our, my frustrations with the soul in fact i fully support uh, bimol's view one uh, india one library software the uh, inclip next should adopt koha as their official software uh, you know for all we can save lot many public monies actually uh, and can at the same time can achieve standardization thank you thank you sir uh, ma'am, Jessica, this question is for you, ma'am. Uh, I actually shared the link. Um, it's on our GitHub site. Okay. Um, for NSEP, and I, I shared that in the YouTube live chat channel. Okay. But if you just go to GitHub and and Bywater Solutions, you'll you'll see the NSEP development there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank it's you, ma'am. Exactly based off of Thank you, ma'am. Chris, Chris Cormack. Okay. Uh, one one last question is there any provision of data visualization tool to be integrated with koha in coming future because a lot of data is are coming with because of that uh, one of the participant is look, any data visualization tool can be integrated with that uh, so for example tabulae or r or ggplot something kind of a thing Yes, it's for Alex and uh, Jessica. If Partha sir is Partha sir is already on that, anyone can address this issue. Means it's good for the audience. Let's Alex start. In the Catalyst Core team, we have a data visualization, or rather, we've got an open source system, and I'm just trying to find some more details about it. But basically, it does graphs. It does um, basically reporting, but Koha itself does a lot of report. Uh, you can create graphs from reports, so you can do a lot of data visualization already. You can do pie graphs, line graphs, um, all sorts of different graphs from a report. So you go to the reporting module, and then you run the report, and then you choose to view it as a graph. So there is quite a lot. You, with the reporting module already, you can do quite a lot of data visualization, but I'll just get the name of this open source tool that our team also uses. I think we are uh, with five questions, finished with the five questions. Uh, I. So I uh, if time permits, may I yeah, yes, if I, time permits yes, uh, may yes, I ask may I put forward one question for Alex? Yes, 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 yeah. yes sir. Very. It's uh, it's uh, you know uh, just uh, any any uh, you know thinking uh, you know is going on in the Koha community. Active thinking, I, I mean that integration of different kind of e-learning workflow and Koha because this is coming in a big way presently. You know, lot many e-learning software because of the pandemic situation and e-learning is here to uh, is uh, came here to stay with us for the uh, for uh, forthcoming you know uh, days. So uh, is there any you know LTI kind of interoperability? and uh, what is the future of koha and uh, module integration or uh, for example uh, module like you know open source uh, e learning solutions yes so there is quite a big interest for integrating the two um i have done quite a lot of work for integrating the two of them i'm not sure jessica do you know is bywater working on the integration between e-learning systems and Koha? We, we've integrated with a few e-content providers um, for vendors here in uh, the USA, like Overdrive and Hoopla and Recorded Books and Cloud Libraries. So public libraries can bring in e-books and, and those results will show up in the Koha OPAC. And then we also have integration with EDS, which is EBSCO's discovery platform. So when a student or faculty member searches the Koha OPAC, if you have the EDS plugin installed, it will also bring back results for articles and databases. And then it has facets that will allow you to limit by, um, you know, full text or different types of content providers. 
Yes, in at Catalyst, there is a big interest in integrating Koha with Moodle and with Mahara, which is an e-portfolio platform. So it's definitely something our team's looking at. That's for sure, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Alex. Uh, I think with this, uh, we will conclude because we are running out of time. Uh, I take this opportunity to thank all the resource person who are on the panel and I thank my institution, my VC, my dean, my head for uh, constantly supporting us to organize this event. And uh, I tender my apology for uh, not managing the time properly <laughs> with the, because we know when we are with a live session, this tend to happen. Anyhow, it's my responsibility. I take my responsibility and tender my apology for it. Uh, once again, I thank uh, Alex, Jessica, ma'am, Vimal, Sunita, ma'am, and uh, Partha, sir, for uh, uh, coming on this platform and uh, uh, giving their views on Koha and how we can take it forward and how as an Indian library professions can embrace Koha in a better way and take forward to more uh, areas where it has not reached till now. As Sunita ma'am already told, we have a lot of digital divides. As a library schools, we have more responsibility towards uh, uh, taking this particular tool towards the ends which it has not seen till now. So with this, I conclude and I thank all the resource person uh, Alex and Jessica ma'am and Vimal, Sunita and Partha on the screen. Thank you once again. I hope we will meet once again in another good event. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, sir, Sumer, sorry for, <laughs> I, I did not notice you. <laughs> thank, you. Thank, you. thank you so much. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Bye to everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.